Hey guys welcome to my channel today we are going to be going to what if the Asylpirites didn't spit part 2, make sure to like and subscribe it helps, and it means the world to me also join the discord if you want disclaimer. There may be mature content and maybe 18 plus content, and I don't own this story with that stuff out of the way let's begin chapter 11. Another day, another death. Ages. Base, Sabo 15. Luffy 12. Life at the facility gradually returned to how it had been before. After the brothers had survived the fire the doctors began rebuilding the lab, leaving the brothers alone for a whole week. It was almost like a vacation. After being locked in a facility where they test on you every day for four years, a week where they leave you alone completely and only give you food, which still tasted horrible, was the best thing they could ask for besides being let out. After the week was up, though, they went back to normal testing. They weren't able to spar because there wasn't anyone to spar against, so they were forced to go to the lab every day and get injected with questionable drugs. After a month the cells were once again filled with children, all under 13, which made Ace and Sabo the oldest subjects. Sparring started again with the reward being bread, and it was like nothing had changed. By now, all the brothers could read and write, but they still practiced with Sabo when there was nothing else to do. When they were bored of that the only thing they could do was sit in silence, the whole way back to being filled with noises of pain. They also tried to figure out how they were going to escape, but no matter how many changes they made in their plans, there was always something they couldn't get around. The first and foremost obstacle being, get out of their cell. Ace and Luffy were always cuffed in sea stone, and the second the doctors opened the door, Sabo was cuffed as well, leaving no chance for them to get out without all of them being severely handicapped. Over the past year, the doctors did more tests on Ace and Luffy involving their devil fruit, injecting them with different things before shoving them into water, or forcing them into tubs where they had to try and move limbs. After all the testing they found that, due to something they had been injected with, the brothers could now last 10 minutes underwater before they ran out of oxygen, and another 2 minutes after that before they passed out. They also found that the two could move for the first 2 minutes of being in the water, meaning that Ace and Luffy could now tread water for a bit, before succumbing to the water's pull. This was extremely useful seeing as they wanted to be pirates. If they fell in the water it'd be an emergency, but they could survive on their own for a bit without needing immediate rescue. After Ace had held the fire back with Seastone on the doctors had tried replicating the drug they had given Ace, giving it to Luffy as well, and found that they both could use their powers to some extent, but after they would be completely drained of energy. Even before they gave Luffy the drug Luffy kept his rubber powers, even with Seastone, but he couldn't use any of his gears. With the help of drug though, he could use the gears for a short period of time. The final enhancement that the brothers got was the power of hockey. Before one of their sparring matches the doctors were talking amongst themselves, Sabo listening like always. And they began wondering what effects hockey would have on the brothers, and all the possible tests they could do if the brothers had hockey. They taught them how to use it, and through lots of training the three had gotten pretty good at it. Sabo was best with observation hockey, while Ace and Luffy were better at armament hockey. They were also learning how to suppress it after they found they could sense how strong the other's hockey was if you didn't. M B O O O O R R E E D D D Luffy signed through their new and improved sign language that was much more subtle than it had been before. Through a series of taps, the brothers could communicate easily and silently amongst themselves. We can play hangman. Sabo suggested, but Luffy shook his head. Tic-tac-toe. Another no. Right. Right. Double no. Sabo sighed. There's not much else we can do then Lou. Sabo said, sitting in front of his brothers. Luffy pouted, wishing he could cross his arms. But I'm B-O-O-R-R-A-D Luffy signed, practically whining. Well get over it, there's nothing we can do. Ace signed, an annoyed look on his face. Over the years Ace had become a little nicer, but he was still extremely hot-headed. Sabo guessed after nearly losing each other many times it was putting things in perspective for Ace, but he was so stressed that most times he couldn't be bothered to be nice, and was just mean instead. I know that but. I swear, if you sign I'm bored. Ace signed, a glare on his face that made Luffy stop signing completely and frown, looking at the ground instead. Sabo sighed, moving a glare towards Ace. Early Ace. Sabo signed, Ace merely scowling and looking away. Shaking his head Sabo grabbed a piece of chalk, rolling another piece towards Luffy. Let's draw. I bet I can draw better than you can. Sabo signed with a challenging smirk. Luffy brightened, grabbing the chalk and drawing the best he could when cuffed. Sabo began drawing as well, going much slower than Luffy was. The two competed against each other for a bit, in the end rolling Sabo as the winner, before it was time to be tested on, hair coming through the halls and announcing numbers. We've got 11,063, 11,041, 11,030, he walked down the hall, children being dragged out of cells by doctors. 11,086, and my favors, 11,062, 11,085, and 11,097. Haru said, standing in front of their cell, Ace glaring harshly at the doctor. Within minutes they were in the lab which had been refurbished, all new chairs with all new straps and everything. 
Testing went as it normally did. Injections, pain, more injections, more pain. Doctors surrounded them, all talking and writing notes about the effects the shots were having on them. Sabu tried listening to them as much as he could, but it was hard when all he could think about was how cold that last shot made him, or how much his head hurt from the one after that. Sometimes the doctors would start talking about important information, like what they were being injected with or who was sparring next. Are we doing test number 10,972,084 today? I'm pretty sure we are, after all, they did bring it in. Good, I've been waiting to test it out. Imagine if it works, it'll be a damn miracle. Should we really be trying it out on him though? What if we lose him? All good things come to an end eventually. Besides, 097's the best subject for this. Sabu's blood ran cold, but it wasn't from the last injection, it was from the words. A test that had the potential to lose the subject. And they were going to use it on 097. Luffy. Sabu turned to his left to look at Luffy, needles being poked in every inch of his skin, doctors writing on clipboards around him. Turning to his right he saw Ace in much the same predicament, and he was sure that he himself was as well. Sabu rubbed his fingers together a few times, hoping Ace would notice and look his way. It seemed that the oldest never would, but as Sabu tried one more time Ace noticed, looking at him, sweat falling down his face as he breathed heavily. Sabu crossed his middle finger over his index finger, tapping them rapidly on the chair. Danger. Ace got the sign loud and clear, pain being replaced with worry as he replied with a series of taps. What's wrong? Sabo flicked his eyes towards Luffy, tapping. They're gonna do a test on Luffy, a deadly one. Ace looked over to Luffy, fear shining in his eyes, though his face only showed a frown, slight pain showing. The brothers didn't know what to do, strapped down and at the mercy of the doctors who were giving them hundreds of shots. What do we do? The sound of taps brought Sabo back to the problem at hand as he read the signs Ace was giving him. What could they do? Sabo didn't know, after all, they could barely move their hands, so how were they going to stop the doctors from giving Luffy the test? Bring it in. You mean test number 10,972,084? Yes, make sure you're on standby to inject the antidote. Yes sir. Sabo practically got whiplash from how fast he spun his head towards Luffy, Ace trying to look over as well when he noticed his brother's fear. A doctor was making his way towards Luffy, a tray of a dozen needles ready to go, while a female doctor followed him holding a needle full of a red liquid. Ace strained to listen to the doctors, almost wishing he had Sabo's hearing at that moment. Beginning test number 10,972,084. Injecting poison. Did he just say poison ace and Sabo shared a look of fear, turning back to watch as the doctor began injecting syringe after syringe of what they now knew to be poison. As they finally finished injecting the liquids into the youngest everyone stepped back, watching the effects. Luffy was quickly becoming a deathly pale color, breathing heavily with sweat rolling down his face. He was shaking, and the older brothers could only imagine how much pain he was going through. Remove all other subjects, prep a table, heart rate rising, hair announced calmly, checking over Luffy. Ace and Sabo, along with the other subjects, were all unstrapped and dragged to the exit, though Ace and Sabo tried getting out of the doctor's grips and go to their brother. Heart rate increasing, temperature rising, poison is taking effect. The words coming from the doctor's mouths weren't helping comfort the brothers. Convulsing, lungs failing. The calmness in the doctor's voices was unnerving as the brothers were pulled out of the room, the door shutting behind them. Ace was shouting at the doctor pulling him, trying to get out of his grip still, but Sabo had stopped, trying to focus on listening to the doctors, hoping that whatever they were going to give Luffy would save him. They were thrown in their cell, the doctors with Luffy still rambling about his symptoms, and how his body was rapidly failing, only making Sabo feel more and more fear, more so than when they were about to be burned to death by the fire last year. Sabo, what's happening? Is Luffy okay Ace asked, noticing the look on Sabo's face. H is there he couldn't even finish his sentence, listening as the doctors began speaking again. Heart failing, loss of consciousness. Sabo. Administration test number 10,972,084 now. Oi. Sabo. What's happening? The silence was deafening to Sabo. None of the doctors were talking anymore. Sabo. Sabo snapped back to reality, looking at Ace who had a full blow look of panic on his face, shocking Sabo more than his shout had. As Luffy okay Ace asked, anger creeping into his voice. Sabo looked at Ace for a moment, mouth open to speak, but not knowing what to say. Was he okay? From the sounds of it, he was dead. He had died too though, right? And the doctors had brought him back so they would do the same for Luffy. Right? Ace's eye I don't know, they're not talking. Sabo said softly, wishing the doctors would just say something already. Two minutes after the test has been administered, no effect so far. Sabo paled, all breath leaving him. Ace I think I think how Luffy Sabo stammered over his words, not wanting to say what he thought, because then it would be all too real. What? What about him? Ace asked, desperately wanting to know. He hated not being able to know what was happening. Ace's dead Sabo said, tears quickly filling his eyes. 
Ace's own grew white, his skin paling and his breathing practically stopping. Three minutes, no effect. Why you lying Ace said, so quiet that if Sabo didn't have such good hearing, he would have missed it. Ace. You lying. Ace shouted, Sabo, flinching at the volume. Ace. I'm not lying. Do you think I'd really lie about something like this Sabo asked, anger in his voice. The oldest of the trio merely stared at him, slowly falling to the ground in shock. He but, but you died too. So so they'll save him. Ace said, almost desperate. Sabo's eyebrows slanted in concern. Four minutes, no effect. Ace, they gave him a drug, to get rid of the poison, it hasn't worked so far, Sabo said in a pain voice. But it's Luffy. He'll be fine. Ace shouted back desperately, clenching his fists, hands still cuffed together. Five minutes, no effect. Test number 10,972,084 has been ineffective. Ace, they just gave up, Sabo said, his tears finally falling. Ace felt like his heart was shattering, the shock too much for him as anger quickly took over. No no those damn bastards. When I get out of here I swear I am gonna kick your asses. Ace shouted, louder than Sabo had ever heard him shout before. The hothead was at the bars, screaming down the hallway while Sabo watched from where he sat, not bothering to stop his brother as he let his tears fall. He didn't want to believe that Luffy was dead, he wanted the doctors to come waltzing down the hall with him in their grip and put him in the cell, safe and sound. He wanted to draw more with him, play more tic-tac-toe, more hanging. He wanted to escape with him, wanted to be free with him, and now he couldn't. His brother was gone. And I swear to Kami if you try opening this cell it'll be your biggest mistake you goddamn asshole bastards. Ace shouted, spewing many more creative curses down the hall in his anger. Six minutes, beginning to clean up, no effects still. The words only broke Sabo's heart more, and now he wished he didn't have to hear those doctors' voices speak about their brother anymore. It was painful, especially when, to the doctors, they were just test subjects, expendable, replaceable. Seven minutes, finishing. The doctor cuts themselves off and Sabo sighed, figuring that he'd rather listen to Ace scream, rather than hear them talk anymore. A heartbeat. Seven minutes, test number 10,972,084 has taken effect. Heart rate rising, blood flowing, BP rising. The words made Sabo sit up in shock, a feeling he couldn't describe filling him as he made a strange shook sound. Ace. Don't you assholes even think about coming in this hallway because when you do. Ace. Ace, Luffy's alive. Ace abruptly stopped screaming, spinning to face Sabo, his face and eyes red and puffy, tears in his eyes, yet they hadn't fallen. What? He asked, rushing over to Sabo who was practically laughing in relief, a new batch of tears falling, these ones of happiness. Breathing heavy, heart rate returning to normal, pupils dilated. He's alive. Whatever they gave him worked. He's breathing again. Sabo said. Ace was silent a moment before a smile stretched on his face, falling to the ground and staring at the ceiling. Thank fucking Kami. Ace said, relieved. He closed his eyes, rubbing his face with his shackled hands. He's alive. He's alive. Sabo murmured, both for Ace and himself. For the next few minutes, the two sat in relieved silence. Dinner came, but they paid it no mind, Ace still staring happily at the ceiling, and Sabo just listening to the sound of Luffy breathing. At one point Sabo heard Haru mention keeping Luffy for observation, but Sabo didn't mind, as long as Luffy was safe. The next day was uneventful. Breakfast was served at its normal time, and when Ace and Sabo finished eating they both sat, waiting for their brother to return. Lunch came almost too quickly and they ate in much the same way they had their breakfast. Why don't we I don't know draw something? Sabo asked, tired of sitting and doing nothing. It was obvious that they weren't going to be tested on today, if they had they would have been gone before lunch, and it didn't seem like Luffy was coming back soon either, Sabo overhearing the doctors talking about the effects of the antidote still. Sure. Ace said unenthusiastically, impatient to see his youngest brother. The two decided on hangman, Sabo trying to think up some more difficult words for Ace to guess. What the hell is this word? Ace asked after guessing a few letters. Sabo smiled, not giving any clues. A few more guesses left Ace with the mostly assembled body. One more wrong letter and he would lose. What the hell kind of word is onomatopoeia? Ace asked, completely butchering the word as Sabo laughed, writing in the missing letters after Ace failed the game. It's pronounced onomatopoeia Ace, Sabo said slowly, Ace scowling in response. You made that word up cheater. Ace said stubbornly which made Sabo laugh more. I didn't, it's an actual word that describes a word that sounds like a noise, like buzz, Sabo explained, a smile on his face as he erased the word. Well, what's with all the random extra letters then? Ace asked stubbornly. Sabo laughed again. They're silent, who knows why they were at it in the first place, Sabo said with a shrug, while Ace pouted. That's a stupid word. The complaint was ignored though when they both heard a door down the hall being opened, grabbing both of their attention. There was Luffy. The boy looked a little worse for wear, his hair slick from sweat, skin a little paler than normal, but he was alive. That was all that mattered. 
The second he was in the cell the two latched onto him, hugging him as tight as they could, never wanting to let go. Luffy, we're so glad you're okay. Sabo said, relief flooding through his voice. Luffy smiled weakly, happy to be back with his brothers. He never liked being near the doctors for short periods of time, and when he was there for a whole day it made him uneasy. Hi, guys. He said, his voice hoarse. They helped him sit down, dinner coming as they did. How are you feeling, Lou? Sabo asked softly, concerned. Luffy shrugged, frowning as he played with his food. Then a bad Luffy mumbled, yawning. Tired. He added, taking a sip of his soup. Sabo nodded. After you eat we can go to sleep, we're all tired, Sabo said, he and Ace having not slept all that well last night due to their worry. Ah ma'am. Luffy hummed, taking more spoonfuls. The soup never got any better, even after years of eating it. They went silent after that, Ace and Sabo keeping a close eye on Luffy in the meantime. Ace hadn't said anything since Luffy got back, and continued not to say anything as they finished dinner, settling down into their usual spot, everyone curling into each other. Nah, Ace. Luffy asked, a frown still on his face. What is it Lou? Ace asked, eyes already closed. Luffy was silent a little longer, Ace peeking an eye open to see if he was still awake, Sabo doing the same. Are you mad at me? Luffy asked, frown deepening in worry in his voice. Ace raised an eyebrow, both he and Sabo were confused by the question. No, why? The eldest asked. Luffy shrugged. I was weak, and I did eyed, and I almost cried cause it hurt a lot, but I didn't. Cause I promised, but I thought you might hate me because you weren't talking to me, and you seemed angry Luffy said, trailing off. Ace opened his mouth, ready to speak. Of course I'm not mad at you Lou, I'm mad at those stupid doctors. It's not your fault they did that stupid test. Ace said. Sabo smiled at seeing Ace actually opening up to Luffy. We were both just worried Luffy, but now everything's okay, we're all alive, Sabo said reassuringly. Ace grimaced. They had been trapped here for too long, and they all had nearly died multiple times. What if, next time, they weren't so lucky? What if one of them really did die, and stay dead? Ace shook his head to rid himself of those thoughts, not wanting to think about scenarios like that. They would escape before something like that happened. They would be out of here by the time they were 17. Chapter 12. Bittersweet 16. Ages. Ace, Sabu 16. Luffy 13. Another year passed by and the brothers were still locked in the facility. It was getting closer to the deadline they had set for themselves to get out, just one more year. Sabo didn't know what would happen if they didn't get out by then. Ace would probably lose all hope and go back to being a suicidal idiot, ready to do absolutely anything it took to get out, while Luffy would probably lose his smile for good. It was already becoming a rare occurrence to see Luffy smile, and if Sabo never saw it again, he would probably join Ace in his suicidal adventure to get out. The last year had been spent planning, as it seemed every year was spent the same way. With no progress, Ace was getting progressively more annoyed and frustrated, ready to give up on a plan altogether, and go out fighting the second they could. The doctors continued their testing, though Sabo suspected they would even if the apocalypse began outside. Sparring also continued, and Ace and Sabo would probably have gained a lot more muscle, if they didn't have only two bowls of horrible soup a day. All of them were extremely thin to the point that it was sickening, but there was nothing they could do except hope for some bread with their food. With Ace and Luffy's appetites and the lack of food they were given, their stomachs seemed to have never stopped growling since they had gotten to the facility. When they got out of here Sabo was prepared to make a feast for them, exclusively meat if he could. The doctors had tried pushing the brothers' limits during sparring, and because of that, the three had found out something pretty helpful. At one point they were fighting a child who had the power to sharpen his skin as sharp as a knife's edge, making the fight difficult to win. At one point the child had gotten Luffy into a hold, ready to stab him, when Ace freaked out, and somehow knocked the kid out from the other side of the room. It had confused all of them, but seemed to make the doctors extremely happy as they came in, babbling about the rare third hockey. Turns out, Ace had the Conquering King's hockey. They didn't really know the full extent of what that meant, but the doctors didn't explain it much, just rambled on to themselves how they could try so many new tests because of this. After that, they forced Ace under immense stress over and over again, whether it be by nearly killing him or nearly killing Sabo or Luffy. Ace activated the hockey a few more times, knocking out the doctors every time, but all three of them would always be strapped down, so they couldn't try escaping when the doctors were down. Other than that, nothing new had happened during training or sparring. They were finally running out of chalk though, onto their very last stick, which upset Luffy since, as he said, it was the last thing they could remember Emily by. After he had said that the three decided not to touch it. They would rather keep the piece of chalk that reminded Luffy of Emily, rather than use it up like they had the others. After the catastrophic event of Luffy dying last year Ace had taken a complete turn in personality, becoming much nicer to the brothers, and doing whatever he could to keep them happy and safe. Sometimes, though, it became a little annoying. But what if Luffy gets hurt? Ace asked. Sabo sighed for the umpteenth time, rubbing a hand down his face, still the only one of the three to not be cuffed 24-7. 
Ace were all bound to get hurt. It's not like the guards are just going to ignore him because we asked politely, Sabo said. This argument had started after Sabo suggested another way to get out, though it was a little risky for all of them. Since Ace had become nicer he had also become a slight bit more of a protective as well. I'm not expecting them to, but why can't I be there so I can kick their asses? Ace asked, wishing he could cross his arms. This was a common argument amongst the two. Whenever they discussed ways to escape Ace would want to be the one to do all the fighting, which just wasn't possible unless Ace wanted to get himself killed, which Sabo wouldn't put past him. Sabo was happy that Ace was much more open than he used to be, but like he said previously, it could get annoying. After Luffy had almost died the doctors had done lots of testing on him, and found out that, after literally dying from extreme amounts of poison, he now had a high tolerance to it. 11,097, today is your lucky day. Harry sang as he came towards their cell, stopping Ace and Sabo's argument. Luffy looked up from where he'd been sitting in the back, listening to Ace and Sabo. None of them liked the words or the way Harry said them as he finally reached their cell. Luffy stood up, obediently walking out seeing as there was no use fighting it. Now on their fifth year in the facility, they were all older than the other children in there, and knew that they should just follow the doctor's orders to avoid unnecessary pain. Sabu sat up straighter in the cell, ready to listen to whatever they did to Luffy and relayed Ace. Luffy was led into the lab, hair humming cheerily beside him, while Luffy walked silently, trying to ignore the insane doctor. Even after five years the feeling Luffy got from Harry never left, it was a perpetually uneasy feeling. There was just something off about the man. It was like a darkness that surrounded him, trying to cling to Luffy, and he didn't like it one bit. The youngest was led into the lab and strapped into the same chair he had since they were first there. There was only a handful of doctors in the room this time seeing as Luffy was the only one being tested on. They began almost immediately, except they did something different from usual. They were strapping weird sticky pads to his head. The pads had wires coming out of them, and they connected to a weird machine. He had no idea what it was or what it did so he just turned back to the doctors, Harry holding a needle. This one's going to pinch more than usual. It sounded like it could have been a warning, like Harry might actually be a little sympathetic, but the smile on his face and the tone in his voice contradicted the wording as he stabbed the needle none too lightly into Luffy's shoulder. It hurt a lot more than a pinch. The liquid was injected into him and it felt like everything was on fire. It was a searing pain that crept through his body, first from his arm, then to his chest, then his legs, and finally his head. He had one of the worst headaches he had ever had in his life, and it felt like his head might explode from all the pressure he felt. There was a pain in his eyes as well, making him squeeze his eyes shut in an attempt to ease some of it, but it did nothing to help. He thought the pain would have started to die down like it normally did, but, if anything, it got worse as time passed. He didn't want to move anything in fear that the pain would only intensify, but it was hard not to move when it felt like thousands of bugs were crawling under your skin. Sweat was pouring down his face now and when he opened his eyes the doctors saw they were bloodshot. He was panting heavily, and after 10 minutes the pain slowly began to ebb away until he felt normal again. Well, normal in terms of feeling no pain. Besides that, something was off. There was something different about what he was feeling, but he couldn't quite put his finger on what it was. It seemed like there was just something. Something in the air maybe. He tried focusing, tried pinpointing where the feeling was coming from, or even what the feeling was, but it was hard. It seemed like it was coming from everywhere at once, but was stronger in some spots more than others. 11,097. A voice brought him back to reality, the doctors all staring at him expectantly. The second he looked at the doctor who called his number, though there was an immense pain in his head again, and images began flashing behind his eyes, confusing him. He could barely make out the strange pictures, but it seemed like a child growing up with their parents, and eventually leaving home. He didn't know what was happening, but suddenly the child was a teen, reading books a lot, and then there was a flash as they talked to some weird marines. The next thing he saw was the teen as an adult, a very familiar one, and they were in the facility, walking through the cell hall and taking children to the lab. He saw himself in one of the chairs, younger. The flashes went away and Luffy opened his eyes, the pain gone as well. The person he had seen was the doctor he had just looked at. Spike in brainwave activity. 11,097, look here. Hare's voice called him and Luffy obeyed, another pain making him close his eyes, as more flashes began to flare behind his eyes. It was much like the other flashes, a child being the focus, the child growing to a teen, then adult, talking to some marines, and being here in the facility, testing on children, seeing himself, Ace and Sabo as well, except this adult was Hare, not the other doctor. Again the pain went away and he was back in the lab, panting heavily, feeling exhausted. It seems he can't control it yet. As Luffy looked over at the doctor who had spoken they met eyes and the pain was back, the flashes were back, and then they were gone. The raven didn't know what was happening, but he didn't like it. It hurt a lot and it was disorienting, the flashes making it hard to process what was happening around him. 11,097, don't look at their eyes. 
At the command Luffy obeyed, not looking anyone in the eyes, and found that the pain didn't come when he looked at someone. Wonderful. To think, we could create something like this. Harry cheered happily, clapping his hands together as someone scribbled words down beside him. Next. 097, I want you to focus on a single person, don't look in their eyes, try to feel what they're feeling. Use me as a practice if you must. Hare said, a smile white on his face. The T nodded, trying to focus on Hare, feel what he was feeling. He didn't know why he was doing this or what was supposed to happen, but Luffy didn't question it, opting to follow instructions and get this over with. Luffy went back to focusing on Hare, trying to feel what he was feeling, but how do you feel how someone else was feeling? You could only feel what you felt, right? But as Luffy focused he could feel the waves of happiness radiating off of Hare, shocking him. He tried focusing harder, enjoying the feeling of the happiness, but when he did there was the sudden, intense feeling of darkness that Luffy always sensed from Hare. It engulfed him like smoke, making it hard to breathe and clouding his thoughts. Luffy immediately stopped trying to feel Hare's emotions, and the feeling went away, relieving the boy. Good. Excellent. Perfect. Try it on him next. Hare said, pointing to the man beside him. Luffy didn't want to feel that darkness again but did as told, focusing on the person beside him. It was a lot easier to do this time, a slight feeling of happiness rolling off the man, but also something that felt like indifference. Digging deeper Luffy felt a hint of sadness that Luffy decided he didn't like the feeling of. Stopping he was met with a large grin from Hare. Amazing. Why don't we begin control now, hmm? Luffy. Are you okay? Sabo asked as the boy came back into their cell. Sabo had heard everything but didn't have a clue what any of it meant, Ace either. Mm, I'm fine, just tired. Luffy mumbled, sitting against the wall. What happened? Ace asked, hiding his concern. He may be a lot more open with his brothers, but that didn't mean he liked to show them all of his emotions. Luffy shrugged. They gave me something weird, it hurt a lot, felt like fire, but it went away, Luffy said, not being all that descriptive. What did it do? Sabo asked, remembering some of the things the doctors said. I don't know. Every time I look at someone's eyes it hurts a lot and there are these weird pictures, and... Weird pictures? Ace asked, confused. Luffy nodded, slightly annoyed at being interrupted. Mm. They're different every time, but it starts with a child, and then they get older and older, and then they're adults, and they talk to some weird marines, and then they're here at the facility, and they're always one of the doctors. Sometimes I saw us in the flashes too. Luffy explained. Sabo looked at him in confusion, having a hunch. Luffy are you seeing their memories? Sabo asked. The youngest tilted his head, seeming to be thinking, before shrugging. I don't know. Sabo sighed. Why don't you look in one of our eyes? If you see our memories then you'll have your answer. Sabo said. Luffy stared at the ground, a frown forming on his face and fear flashing in his eyes. B but it hurts when I do. I don't like it. Luffy whined. Sabo and Ace gave him worried looks. Just once. Besides, Sabo told me they said something about controlling it right. A way to look at people without seeing the flashes. Ace asked, placing a hand on Luffy's shoulder. Luffy nodded slowly, still not looking up. So then you need to practice. If you do, it'll hurt, but then you won't have to stare at the ground for the rest of your life. Ace said. Luffy hesitated, but slowly lifted his head, but didn't meet any of their watching eyes. They alright I guess I'll try Luffy said softly. They both nodded. Well, then have a look, you guys already know how I grew up, Sabo said with a shrug. Luffy nodded again and looked at Sabo in the eyes, the pain returning as the flashes came. He could see Sabo as a child in a weird room with a lot of books. There was a man and woman there too, and another kid, Sabo's biological family. Then Sabo was in the Great Terminal, a place Luffy hadn't seen in years. And he saw Ace too, a lot younger than he was now, and then there was himself. Oh, and Dayton, and Makino, and Garb. But then, he saw them get captured, saw them taken to the boat, saw them locked in a closet, Ace shouting a lot at Sabo, and then they were in the facility, in their cell, tested on. Time passed quickly as Luffy watched, tests being done over and over again, until one test happened where everyone had to leave except Sabo, and then Sabo wasn't breathing. Everything went black and Luffy thought he fell asleep, but when the light came back it was still the flashes, and Luffy realized Sabo had died. He watched the years go by until they were back to the present, the flashes fading away. What happened? Sabo asked as they saw Luffy's eyes refocus, pupils which had dilated shrinking back to normal size. Luffy blinked a few times before looking back at the ground. I saw your memories, all of them, Luffy said softly, cherishing the glimpse he'd seen of Makino, Dayton, and even Garb. He saw his whole life in less than a minute. Ace asked. Luffy hadn't known it happened that quick, it felt much longer. He shrugged. I guess. Sabo sighed. Well now we know what's happening, so all we have to do is control it, right? Sabo said, trying to encourage his brother. Luffy nodded slowly, still unsure. Come on, we face five years of hell, you can beat a few hours trying to control this. Ace said encouragingly. 
Luffy stared at the ground, a slow smile forming on his lips, causing Ace and Sabo to smile as well. Amen. I can control it. Luffy said happily. Great. The doctor said that all you had to do was block it. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's a start. Sabo said with a shrug. Try thinking about not seeing the memories when you look at someone. Ace suggested. Luffy nodded, preparing to feel the pain but forcing himself to believe that he wouldn't see any memories when he looked up. The brothers practiced for hours, dinner coming and passing, but having no progress. Even if Luffy glimpsed at someone's eyes he saw their memories. He didn't like it, it felt invasive. Memories were precious, and Luffy didn't like that he could just go and see them without trying. It wasn't expected to get it down in a day Lu, we'll get it eventually, Sabo said encouragingly, patting Luffy's back. The raven nodded, staring at the ground. Well, what else happened when you were in there? Ace asked, changing the subject as the three laid down, getting ready to sleep. I can feel people's feelings, Luffy said, yawning at the end of the sentence. Is that what was happening? All I knew was Harry was really adamant about you trying to guess what people were feeling. Sabo said, eyes closed as he laid on Ace's chest. Luffy nodded. Amen. Ah, if I focus on a person I can feel what they feel. If they're happy I could feel happy, if they were sad I felt sad. I didn't like sad though so I stopped when I felt that, but happy was a nice feeling. Luffy said surely, remembering what the feeling felt like. Oh yeah. What else? Ace asked. Luffy hummed. Well there was this bad feeling coming from here Luffy said, voice going soft. Bad feeling? Sabo asked, peeking his eyes open. Luffy nodded. It was dark I couldn't breathe, and it didn't feel good at all Luffy said, shuddering at the memory of it. Ace and Sabo shared a glance. Well maybe you shouldn't focus too much on him then, it doesn't sound like a good experience, Sabo said after some thought. Luffy shook his head. It's not. He confirmed with a frown. After that they settled down, ready to sleep, but Luffy suddenly remembered something. Oh yeah, I also keep feeling something, but I don't know what it is or where it's coming from, Luffy said, feeling it now, though it was different, warmer. What do you mean? Sabo asked. Luffy hummed again. I don't know it's like something in the air. In the lab, it felt all jumbled and weird, but here it feels warm and nice. Luffy said, liking the feeling. Is it emotions? Ace asked offhandedly, taking a guess. Luffy opened his mouth, prepared to say that it couldn't be because he wasn't focusing, but then he realized. Oh, it is. You're smart Ace. Luffy said happily, laughing to himself while Ace flushed. Wait, it is emotions. Ace asked, slightly shocked that he had guessed right without trying. Luffy nodded. Ah ma'am. I couldn't tell because I wasn't focusing on anyone, but I can feel everyone's feelings. They're not as strong as when I focus on someone though. Luffy said, focusing on Ace and finding that the warm feeling was emanating from him, then focusing on Sabo and feeling the same feeling. Luffy didn't know quite what emotion it was, but it was nice, and was only what Luffy could describe as the nice feeling of being hugged. At least we figured it out. Tomorrow we can try controlling your new powers more. Sabo said, the two nodding their agreement as they all fell asleep. Control at 11,097, Harry said strictly, an unhappy look on his face. Luffy could feel the frustration and annoyance flowing off of the man, making him feel bad. The negative emotions impacted him more than his own emotions did, and it was harder to concentrate. Luffy looked up from the ground, trying to block any flashes from coming through, but as he looked into the random child's eyes, he saw their memories, flashing behind his eyes. Again, Harry said, anger rising. Luffy looked at the ground, his head pounding from all the memories he'd seen. They had been trying to control it since morning, and Luffy was trying as hard as he could to do it like the doctors wanted him to, but no matter how hard he tried it didn't work. You have three more tries 097. If you don't do it by then there will be repercussions. Haru said in a dangerous tone. Luffy knew he wasn't bluffing, the doctor's feeling of anger ensured he would. Luffy felt fear begin to take form in him, his heart beating faster as he raised his eyes to the child again. He can't see the memories, if he does he'll be punished, and he doesn't want to feel more pain. Two more tries. Luffy winced at the onslaught of memories but tried again, looking into the child's eyes. One more. The tone was harsher than before, and Luffy felt like the walls were closing in as he panicked. He tried as hard as he could to not see the memories, imagine building a wall behind his eyes so he wouldn't see them, and when he looked up, he only saw the child. He almost didn't believe it at first, but as he stared into the terrified child's eyes, he relished in the fact that there was no pain, no memories, just a person. Luffy looked at Hare, excitement in his eyes as he felt the anger leave the doctor, being replaced with the happiness, excitement. Perfect. Congratulations Lou. Sabo said as Luffy told them how his day went. And it didn't hurt, and I didn't see the memories, and I can look at people instead of the ground. Luffy rambled happily, feeding off the happiness coming from his brothers, as well as that warm feeling. So now you don't have to worry anymore. Ace said, sitting beside Sabo. Luffy nodded. MHM. If I wanna see memories all I gotta do is take down the wall, 
but I don't want to do that cause it hurts and memories are private, and they're people's treasures, so I don't want to ruin them. Luffy continued. It was the most lively the brothers had seen him in a while. And then I had to learn how to control all the feelings coming from people, and now it's not so powerful, and if I focus on someone I can feel all their emotions. If I don't it's still there, but not as strong as before. Sabo and Ace merely nodded along, seeing no point in stopping their brother, when he hadn't had a chance to be this happy in a while. But after we did all that they made me get another shot, and that one hurt my head again and my eyes, Luffy said, voice toning down a bit. Ace and Sabo frowned. They hadn't been in the lab that day, only Luffy and sometimes another kid, but Sabo hadn't been listening closely, he and Ace had been working on the plan. Did it do anything? Sabo asked. Luffy shrugged. Dunno. They were talking a lot, but I think they said something about it working tomorrow. Luffy said. The eldest brothers shared a look but tried keeping their feelings more on the side of calm, not wanting Luffy to feel their worry. Well, it might just be nothing. Ace said dismissively, waving a hand. Sabo and Luffy nodded, all relaxing again. When Luffy woke up he realized that things seemed a little different. Everyone he looked at had a weird color around them, Ace and Sabo having a weird transparent light blue color, while the guy who gave them breakfast had a slightly darker blue-gray color. He wanted to mention it to Ace and Sabo, but Luffy didn't even have a chance to eat breakfast before Harry was dragging him out of his cell, the color around him a pure opaque black. It wasn't very pleasant to look at or be near. Sabo and Ace were still in the cell along with everyone else in the facility, and that only confused them more. It's been three days, why do they keep taking Luffy? Ace asked. The doctors had always had an interest in the boy's sense, at first, he was the only one with a devil fruit, but this was a bit much, even for them. I don't know, but I'm gonna focus on them more this time, Sabo muttered, leaning against the wall and closing his eyes, listening so he could hear the doctors talking. Test number 3,829,719, underway. Luffy was strapped to a chair, all the doctors in the room having the same strange colors around them, all the same grey-blue, except for Harry who had pure black. 11,097, what do you see? Harry asked, all the doctors ready to write down Luffy's every word. I don't know, colors, Luffy said softly. He had never been asked any questions by the doctors, and he was pretty sure it was the first time he'd ever talked to them, besides when he talked to Emily. Colors? Where? What colors? Around people they're blue or grey or were black Luffy said, still not sure if he should be talking, but not having much choice. Excellent. Can you turn the colors off? Stop seeing them. He asked, and Luffy nearly shrugged but was restrained by the straps. I dunno, Luffy muttered, wanting to stop talking to them. Try. It was a demand and Luffy was forced to obey. He tried doing what he'd done to not see memories, creating a wall, and found that the colors did dim slightly, but weren't gone completely. He tried strengthening the wall and, eventually, there were no more colors. T they're gone. Harry's smile grew and a dark feeling came off him, making Luffy shudder. The doctor's attention left Luffy as they regrouped, all talking at once, and Luffy began to zone out. He tried focusing on one person to feel emotions for fun, but quickly got bored, especially when most of the doctors felt neutral, no strong emotions coming off of them, not even happiness or anger. Let's begin the final test of the series, Harry announced suddenly, drawing Luffy's attention back to him. He was, once again, injected with a liquid. It didn't feel like anything was happening at first, but then there was a drowsiness that overwhelmed him completely, making it impossible to keep his eyes open. Working strong will mind Luffy couldn't make sense of the words being spoken around him as he drifted off. When he woke up he was in the training room, except he was strapped to a chair, another one in front of him with another child sitting in it, also strapped down. Welcome back 11097. Let's begin testing. Luffy recognized the voice as being Harris, the man outside of the training room. He could feel the strong feelings coming from outside the room, knowing they belonged to Hare, and didn't like the nauseous feeling it gave him. The child in front of him wasn't any better, the poor kid radiating fear and panic, with an intensity that began making Luffy feel panicked as well. Create a bridge between you 2097. It wasn't much help and Luffy didn't know what that meant, but he was told to do it so he had to. He didn't want to be punished. What if they tried to hurt Ace and Sabo? They'd done it before when he hadn't listened, so he didn't doubt they'd do it again. Luffy looked into the child's eyes and tried imagining him creating a bridge to them. He was only trying for a few seconds before the kid looked to be in pain, eyes closing and face scrunching up as he let out a groan. Luffy hesitated but continued, trying to ignore the emotions coming from the child. The child let out a scream, nearly breaking Luffy's concentration, but Harry urged him to continue so he did. The emotions coming from the boy were hard to ignore now, the terror and panic spiking along with the new feeling of pain bombarding him. Luffy pushed through it though, imagining the bridge finally being built, connecting to the child in front of him, and for a split second, there was what looked to be a wave of gas replacing the imaginary bridge, but before Luffy could examine it, it disappeared. Along with both the child's noises and their emotions. Luffy sat there for a minute, confused. 
He had never felt someone's emotions completely leave, even if they were sleeping, but the boy was just suddenly unfeeling. While Luffy wondered what happened a doctor came in, checking on the child before clicking their tongue, unstrapping them and leaving the room, dragging the child with him. Terminated. Luffy had heard the doctor say that word before, and never really knew what it meant. When he asked Sabo he explained to him that it was when something came to an end, and after the fire, when he heard the doctor saying that all the kids were terminated he knew. They had died. The child had just died in front of his eyes. Luffy's stomach dropped and his eyes widened in horror and shock. Had he just killed someone? He didn't want to. He didn't mean to. He wanted to run back to his cell, back to Ace and Sabo. He wanted out because he couldn't have just killed the child, he hadn't even touched him. There was no getting out though as another doctor came in with another child, and he was forced to repeat the same process he had before. This one ended the same way, the child dying right before his eyes, and Luffy didn't know how much more he could handle. This happened over and over, new children being brought in every time, and Luffy was ready to stop, not wanting to keep doing this, but as the next child died and a new one came in Luffy was frozen in shock, fear beginning to cloud his mind completely. Again, 097. Hare's voice sounded distant and far away to Luffy, his mind focused on something much more important to him than following the doctor's orders. The ace, he couldn't do it. If he tried creating the bridge then ace would die, and he would never be able to forgive himself. It's okay Luffy, just do what he says. Ace said reassuringly, glaring daggers at the door where the doctor was leaving. B e, but I can't. If I do why you you die. Like the others. A A Saya killed him. Luffy said, tears coming quickly to his eyes, but as always, not falling. Ace's glare fell, turning to look at Luffy. It wasn't your fault Lou, and besides, what have I always said, I wouldn't die, not when I've gotta look after my weak little brother. Ace said. Luffy still hesitated, despite his brother's comforts. Why you promise? Luffy asked softly. Ace nodded. Promise. Ace said. Luffy still didn't want to do it, but Harry was ordering him to, and Ace was telling him it was gonna be fine. Ace never lied, Ace was always right. Luffy looked into Ace's eyes and slowly began creating the bridge. As he did he noticed the noise of pain Ace made and nearly stopped until Harry told him not to. He was debating on whether or not to continue when Ace spoke up. Keep going Lou, I'm fine, just a little headache is all. Just focus on my emotions. Ace said, projecting as much warmth as he could at Luffy. Luffy relished in the feeling and nodded, continuing the process without stopping. Whenever Ace seemed to be in pain a feeling of happiness, of warmth, of love, radiated off of him and Luffy could continue. As he was finishing Luffy prepared for the worst, knowing this was when the others would be terminated. The wave of gas appeared, but instead of disappearing immediately it stayed. It was slightly transparent and red in color, coming from Ace's chest and leading towards Luffy. The pain left Ace's face, and he watched Luffy in interest as Luffy examined the wave with large eyes. I, I did it. Ace, you're okay. Luffy cheered happily, Ace smiled, ready to say something when a doctor came in, swapping him with another child, and Luffy felt his apprehension return. Why did he have to keep going? He did it, so they should be done, right? Again. The word sank Luffy's heart and he stared at the child, feeling their fear. He had done it with Ace, so maybe he could do it here too. It didn't work. He tried, he tried so hard, but the child's emotions left and so did the wave, the doctor announcing they were terminated as they switched the child out. The only solace Luffy had now was the red wave that he could still see, knowing that at the end of it, Ace was okay. It was weird to see the wave. It went through the closed door, and Luffy knew if he followed it, he would find Ace. His thoughts were interrupted once again as a doctor came in, Sabo in hand. It was his nightmare all over again. Hey, Lou, Sabo said with a sheepish smile. Luffy frowned. Maybe the time with Ace was only one time thing, maybe Sabo would die. The last child did, so maybe he didn't know how to use his powers. Again. Hey, Lou, it'll be fine, like Ace said, just focus on my emotions, okay? Sabo asked gently. Luffy, not having much choice, swallowed hard and nodded. Sabo exuded the same warmth as Ace, and it was comforting for Luffy, as he did his best to ignore the pain sound Sabo was making. As he finished connecting the bridge Luffy was amazed to find that it had worked for Sabo as well, but instead of red, his wave was a slightly transparent yellow. We're done for the day. Harry's voice filtered through the speakers, and Luffy felt relieved that it was finally over, doctors coming in and unstrapping them both, taking them back to their cells. Luffy was right in thinking that Ace's wave led back to him as they reached the cell, their brother waiting inside. Hey, welcome back. Ace said with a smile. Luffy wanted to smile as well, but he could only think of all the kids he had just killed. Chapter 13. Let the plans commence. Ages. Ace, Sabo 17. Luffy 14. Man, it's been a while since we docked. A man wearing a chef's outfit exclaims, stretching his arms, a smile on his face. We haven't been near any islands for a while, Yuri. Another says, walking up beside the chef and lazily glancing around the small beach. 
Oh, Marco, so you actually decided to stop working and come have fun? The chef asks, grinning at Marco. The man sighs, shaking his head. We're not here to have fun, Thatch. We're here to restock and not get into any trouble, Marco says to the chef who pouts. But trouble is much more fun than no trouble at all. Thatch mumbles. He doesn't get a response as Marco looks around the beach more, noticing a path to the right and gesturing to it. That probably leads to a town. Did you send a group already, Yuri? Marco asks, the chef nodding in response. The two began making their way over to the path. Yeah, they left about an hour ago when we docked, should be there by now unless it's further away than we thought, Thatch says, following closely behind Marco as they headed towards the path. It was quiet for a moment before Thatch spoke up again. The silence practically covered in trees. The chef notices, looking at all of the trees surrounding them. I heard there's only a small town on this island, the rest of it covered with forest, Yuri, Marco says in a bored tone, closing his eyes as they walk. Thatch whistles. Who knows what's in those woods, then, huh? He says, more to himself seeing as Marco was focused more on getting to the town than the possibility of an adventure within the dense forest. When Marco didn't respond Thatch frowned before a smile lit up on his face. Aren't you the least bit interested in what's out there? Thatch presses, the smile on his face growing. Marco shrugs. Why would I? This is paradise, you're. Not to mention I've heard that the townspeople have looked and found nothing but trees. Marco says. Thatch sighs dramatically. But that, my feathery friend, is why you go exploring yourself. After all, why should we believe word of mouth? I say we go into the forest later. Thatch exclaims. Marco shakes his head, though his lazy expression never changes. I've got too much paperwork, but you can go exploring all you want Thatch. Just know, if you get lost we're leaving without you, Yuri. Marco says. Thatch pouts. Boring. You should lighten up. Have some fun. Thatch prods, bumping shoulders with Marco who merely shakes his head in mild annoyance, but ignores Thatch nonetheless. Thatch huffs at this, crossing his arms. Earlier. This was it. They were finally going to try and escape. The brothers had been planning, scrapping, replanning, and perfecting their escape for seven whole years. They had been trapped in hell for seven entire years, no one saving them, no one coming in to break them out, no one finding out the horrible things these people had done to children. The brothers had been there for so long that they had quickly grown out of their clothes, and the doctors had to give them new ones, but they were old, tattered, and just slightly too big for all of them. They didn't have shoes either, the doctors seeing no need in giving them any. The last year had been the worst year of all. After the doctors practically forced Luffy to kill he had been traumatized, and no matter what the brothers did, they hadn't seen him smile since. Luffy had locked himself away, sitting in the corner of the cell and not engaging with them for months. Eventually, he opened up again after the brothers constantly reassuring him that he hadn't killed the children, the doctors had. Even after they got him to start speaking again, they still hadn't gotten him to smile. Sabo found out by listening to the doctors that they had done a series of tests on Luffy, that they called the pure soul tests. The first one, the one allowing Luffy to feel emotions and see memories, was allowing Luffy to open others' souls, and see what made up a person. The second test, allowing Luffy to see colors around people, was Luffy actually seeing a soul, blue meaning the soul was nicer, pure, while black meant corrupted, evil. The final and worst tests had been the waves, as Luffy called them. The last test allowed Luffy to connect his soul with another's, which they called bonding. The doctors had a theory that the reason it didn't work with the other children was because Luffy hadn't had time to get to know that person in their soul. But since he had grown up with his brothers it had worked. After the doctors had done this to Luffy the elder two had vowed to get them out before they could do anything worse. Ace and Sabo were both 17, and if they didn't get out by the end of the year, all help would probably be lost. Going over the plan again for the hundredth time, Sabo felt apprehensive. Maybe they should wait a little longer so that they can make sure everything goes okay. But they couldn't wait any longer. Not when, every time they saw Luffy, their heart broken too. And then after that's done, Luffy, you have to get out, understand. Sabo signed to Luffy, the three going over the plan once more. Luffy nodded, determination on his face as he gripped his hat tightly, placing it on his head for the first time in seven years. He could feel his brothers worry, both of them wanting the plan to work, and he was going to try as hard as he could to do the best he could, and follow the instructions he had been given. Alright, now all we have to do is wait until breakfast. Sabo signed, the three having gotten up earlier than normal to go over the plan. And remember Luffy, if, for some reason, we get split up, get out and don't talk to anyone. No matter what. Don't tell them your name, don't tell them about the facility, and definitely don't tell them about your devil fruit or any other powers the doctors gave you. Got it. Ace asked sternly. They didn't know how many people knew about the facility, or them for that matter. Luffy nodded again. It was a tense silence as they waited for the sounds of the food cart. All three of them felt anxiety pulling in their guts, nauseous. This plan had to work because if it didn't, they would never have another chance to try it again. Get ready. Sabo signed, sitting up straighter. 
His brothers nodded, Ace moving closer to the cell door, Luffy beside him and Sabo on the end. It was nerve-wracking, listening to the cart get closer and closer as they stopped at every cell to hand out food. Finally, the cart reached their cell, going to the cell across from them before turning to theirs. The plan was in action. The second the cell was unlocked Ace jumped into action, using all the tests those doctors had performed on him to his advantage, as, even with Sea Stone, he flared his fire up, shocking the doctor as he slammed his cuffed fists on the man's head, catching him before he fell. After the brothers found that Ace and Luffy could slightly use their powers even with Sea Stone they had practiced until Ace was strong enough to create that burst. It left him tired and unable to use his fire anymore, but it was enough. Luffy ran out behind Ace, Sabu close behind. The blonde brother grabbed a set of keys from the doctor, and the three booked it to the end of the hallway. Everything after this was unfamiliar territory, even if they had a map, which Sabo was also carrying. Sabo tried keys quickly, flipping through key after key until the door unlocked, thanking the stars that, even though confused, the children in their cells weren't making much noise about what was happening. They flung open the door, Ace in front and Sabo and Luffy holding onto his shirt. Emily had been right, the halls were completely pitch black. Okay, there's only one door in here Ace. Sabo whisper shouted. Ace nodded, seeing the door as clear as if the light was on, moving briskly to it and pushing it open. Don't go in the right door, go straight, Sabo said from memory. He had gone over the path they needed to go through a million times over. Ace, ignoring the door on his right, went towards the one straight ahead and opened it, entering another hole. There was only one door here, so Ace moved without waiting for Sabo to say anything. As they entered the next room Sabo wasn't able to say anything when there was a blaring noise, hurting his ears. An alarm had been sounded. He could hear people running their way and cursed to himself, shoving the map and keys into Ace's hands. He was the only one who could see the map anyways. Straight. Sabo shouted over the noise, the three running quickly through the door, footsteps even closer now. The room was quickly filled with people and they were ready to fight, all three using their heightened senses to their advantage. They got a few doctors and who they assumed to be guards down, but more came in. Though? I'll catch up. You got the map Ace. Sabo shouted, pushing his two brothers ahead. Luffy was ready to protest, but Ace nodded, grabbing Luffy and running. Wait, Sabo. Ace, we have to help Sabo, what are you doing? Luffy shouted as Ace pushed through another door, fighting off as many guards as he could in the meanwhile, Luffy helping. It was a lot harder to fight when their hands were cuffed, and the sea stone made them more sluggish than usual. He'll be fine Luffy, trust me, okay Ace shouted over all the noise. Luffy was going to argue more, ready to tell his older brother how wrong he was, but he could feel the worry rolling off of Ace in waves, stopping his argument. Obviously, something was happening that Luffy didn't understand. Even though he wanted to go back and help Sabo something told him to keep going. If Ace wanted him to he obviously had a plan, maybe they would come back for Sabo later. Okay Luffy said softly, Ace pushing through more guards and through yet another door. Unbeknownst to Luffy, the older brothers hadn't actually planned on them getting out. There was no way the three would be able to take down all the guards, especially when two of them were cuffed, so, without Luffy's knowledge, they planned on getting Luffy out, and if they could, themselves. As long as Luffy was free, they'd be happy. When Ace focused back on the fighting it was evident to him that they weren't going to get much further, Ace being overwhelmed by guards quickly. Luffy, remember this okay Ace shouted to his brother, the two back to back. Luffy nodded, confused, but listening. Go right, straight, left, straight, and then keep going straight until you reach the stairs. Then go out the big doors, alright Ace shouted, confusing Luffy more. Why did he need to go? What about Ace? Right, straight, left, straight Luffy. Ace shouted, and the youngest sputtered, nodding. Right, straight, left, straight. Luffy repeated, and suddenly something was shoved into his hands as he was pushed through a door, hearing it slam behind him. He was confused, disoriented, and now completely in the dark, both figuratively and literally, in an empty hallway. It only took him seconds to figure out what Ace had done, but no matter how much he wanted to turn around and help his brother he had to get out. He would get out and they'd be right behind him, right? If not, Luffy was going to come back and save them, no matter how much they protested, because they were brothers. Maybe Ace was going back to get Sabo. Maybe, when he got out, they would be right there with him again. Fighting back tears Luffy repeated like a mantra the directions Ace had told him. Right, straight, left, straight. He muttered to himself, holding his hands out in front of him, and running blindly to his right until he hit a wall, feeling blindly along it until he felt a door. He opened it, running in quickly and rushing forward, doing the same as he'd done before. Apparently all of the gourds had crowded themselves in the previous rooms, because he wasn't meeting anyone now. He could hear the sounds of a fight still going on, and doors were opened, slamming against the wall, giving Luffy the idea that they were running after him, only making the adrenaline in him pump faster. Right, straight, left, straight. Luffy said again, not smelling anyone coming his way, only those behind him. He found the next door, hoping he was going the right way as he pushed into the next hallway. 
All he needed to do now was go straight, and he did. What did Ace said next? Go straight to the stairs. Luffy sure hoped so as he charged blindly forward, pushing open a door, and then another, and then... Light. It was dim, but it just barely lit up the stairs in front of him. He felt light and jumpy, adrenaline pumping in him, and making everything seem to move in a blur, as he stumbled as quickly as he could up the stairs. He could hear the people getting closer behind him, smell them too, but he was so close, he was almost out. His heart was pumping faster than it ever had before. When he finally got up the stairs he opened the door at the top, and nearly froze at all the guards that spun to look at him. Dear second. He wasn't going to mess the plan up. His body became red, steam pouring off him as he used his little bit of energy to use his gear. He could see the giant glass doors Emily had always told them about, right there, sunlight pouring through them. As the guards rushed towards him Luffy disappeared, pushing the doors open and using his speed to run through a forest that was surrounding the outside of the facility. Where was he going? What was he going to do now? Luffy had no clue, always assuming his brothers would be here with him when he got out so they could all leave together, but they were in there and he was out here. He didn't know how far he ran, but after a minute his gear ended, the sea stone completely taking over now as he felt weakened. Maybe Ace and Sabo were running behind. Maybe if he waited they would come running after him. Luffy stopped to take a breath, glancing around for somewhere he could hide. He didn't know if the doctors were following him or not, but he wasn't going to take any chances. The only thing around him was trees, so he decided to hide behind one, kneeling on the ground and trying to catch his breath. He made sure to focus on his sense of smell in case anyone was chasing him, and looked at what Ace had shoved into his hand earlier. He hadn't been able to see it before, but now as he opened his palm, he saw the keys Sabo had used to open the cell hall door. Maybe one of them would work on his cuffs. Luffy awkwardly fiddled with the keys, having a hard time twisting and turning them to fit into the keyhole on his cuffs, tongue sticking out in concentration. After a few failed attempts he managed to find the right key, twisting it in the lock and removing one cuff. A feeling of elation filled him, and he quickly unlocked the other, removing the cuffs and throwing them as hard as he could in a random direction. He could feel all of his energy returning now that the sea stone was gone, and decided to look for Ace and Sabo's waves. He had noticed a while ago that the wave was related to the brothers' health, getting more transparent when they were sick and more opaque when they were healthy. He found the red and yellow wave quickly, leading back towards the facility, but it wasn't as opaque as it had been minutes ago, it was more transparent than he had ever seen them. What was he gonna do? His brothers were probably caught, and who knew what Harry would do to them. Panic filled Luffy as he tried desperately to think of what to do. He couldn't just run back in there, he would get caught, but he had to get them out, and all the other kids too, he had promised Emily. And then Luffy stood up straighter. He smelled someone. Come on Marco, there's gotta be something else on this island. It's huge. For the last time Thatch, there isn't, there's only the town, Yuri. Well have you checked? I've already told you I haven't. Then we should go look. Come on, don't be such a party pooper. The two pirates were walking down the same path that they had been earlier, only this time they were returning from the town. The group Thatch had sent ahead earlier had gotten everything they needed, so they were able to relax and do some window shopping, in the end not buying anything. They were surrounded by trees on either side of them, and Thatch was still persistent in getting Marco to go exploring with him. It wasn't going too well. We're supposed to be getting ready to leave soon, Yuri, not exploring the forest like kids, Marco said, a bored look in his tone and on his face. Thatch pouted, crossing his arms. Well, maybe you should lighten up and try being a bit more like a kid, Thatch said. Marco had to contain his annoyance. We're pirates, not kids. I know that but... Thatch cut himself off as he suddenly felt something moving towards them at a very fast speed. Marco must have noticed it too because he was facing the trees, looking in the direction of where the thing was coming from. Animal. Thatch asked, trying to read whatever the thing was. It would make sense that it was an animal with how fast it was moving, and the fact that it was in the never-ending trees. No, I don't think so, it seems more like a person, Yuri, Marco said with narrowed eyes, the two slipping into battle stances. If it is this one fast person. Chapter 14. Freedom at last. He needed help. He had to get help. He had to help his brothers. He had to help the children. He promised, he couldn't break his promise. If he didn't have his brothers, what was the point of freedom? They were supposed to be free together. Luffy ran as fast as he possibly could using the energy he had gotten from removing the sea stone. Trees flew past him in a blur, twigs scratching his arms and legs. He was tripping over roots and rocks, but he ignored that, following the scent of the people. Maybe he shouldn't be doing this. Maybe he should find out how to get them out on his own. What if these people locked him back up in the facility? What if they were more doctors? Or guards? There was no backing out of the plan though, because Luffy suddenly crashed through the trees, nearly running down the two he was after. Hey, whoa there. Luffy looked up at the man with big hair, huffing and puffing, trying to catch his breath. You okay kid? You don't look so good. Big hair gave him a look and Luffy gulped, backing away from the two. 
They didn't look like doctors, but he hadn't really gotten a good look at what the guards looked like, so maybe they were them, going to take him back. You need help, Yuri. You lost. The one beside Big Hair spoke. What was he going to do? He promised Ace he wouldn't talk to anyone, but he really needed help. What if they were bad though? What if they hurt him or his brothers? Luffy suddenly had an idea, tearing down one of his many mental walls. The colors that he could see around people popped up, both of the colors around the two being blue. That was good, right? None of the doctors at the facility had been blue, all of them had been gray or black, so he could trust these guys to help, right? There wasn't much choice, so Luffy swallowed, silently apologizing to Ace. Do you think he can talk Marco? Big Hair asked after Luffy remained silent. Luffy searched for the man's emotions, finding no darkness, only concern. He did the same to Marco as Big Hair called him and found the same thing. They had to be good people. They weren't going to hurt him. Luffy looked at Thatch, answering the question he had asked his friend with a shake of his head. He wasn't going to talk like he promised Ace, but he was going to get their help. Well, that makes things harder, Thatch mumbled. Luffy hesitated. How was he going to get their help if he couldn't talk? He didn't have much time to think so he grabbed Big Hair's sleeve, pulling him back towards the way he came, pleading in his eyes as he looked at the man. Whoa, where are we going? Oh man, how does this stuff happen to me? Big Hair asked as Luffy dragged him through the forest, Marco following closely behind. Can you tell us anything, Yuri? Marco asked. Luffy thought, still running as he did. He turned to the man, hoping he could read lips. Help. The two gave him a confused look, and he repeated the word a few times. Help. Marco asked, and Luffy nodded quickly. What do you need help with, are you lost? Big Hair asked. Luffy shook his head. He may not know where in the world he was, but that wasn't his priority right now. Brothers. He mouthed the word a few times, waiting for the two to understand. Brothers. Your brothers need help. Marco asked, Luffy nodding that he was correct. Bad people. Luffy was hoping the two would get the two words. It took them a little longer but they got it. Bad. That's the first word, right? Big Hair asked proudly as Luffy nodded. Okay, bad what? Bad Pete. Bad pimple. Bad. Bad people, Yuri. Marco asked, Thatch, patting at him as Luffy nodded. Aw, oh, come on Marco I almost had that one. Big hair whined while Marco rolled his eyes. It's not a game Thatch, Marco said. Thatch. So that was Big Hair's name. So bad people have your brothers and they need help, Marco concluded, Luffy nodding again. Well, if that's the case, we'll definitely help you out kiddo. Promise. Thatch said with a smile as the trees thinned. Luffy looked at the man, wondering if he would keep that promise. The straw-hatted boy watched as the facility came into view, and he nearly froze as they got closer. He was about to willingly enter the hell he had gone through for seven years. What is this place, Yuri? Marco asked. Ha! I told you there was something on this island. That shouted. Luffy stayed silent, fear in his eyes as he glanced at the building. Prying his gaze away he looked at the two, mouthing another word. Basement. As the two slowly understood the word they walked closer. Oh, basement, they're in the basement. Thatch asked, Luffy nodding. Alright, let's go save your brothers. Thatch shouted happily, filling Luffy with hope. Maybe this would work. His body went numb as they pushed open the big glass doors, nausea filling him instantly. He hadn't really looked at the room when he escaped, but as he did now, he felt confused. The wall was covered in painted clouds and animals in light pastel colors. The floor was a familiar pure white, and there were two couches beside the doors on either side with tables beside them. Colorful rugs covered the floor and in the corner, there was a bunch of toys for kids. In front of the doors, there was a desk with a woman sitting behind it, smiling warmly to them, but Luffy could feel the darkness creeping off of her, only making his nausea worse. Ah, you brought our patient back. She said cheerily, pressing a button on the desk. Marco and Thatch shared a confused look as the woman continued smiling. He escaped just recently, had everyone in a panic. In just a moment Dr. Ah, here he is. Luffy felt his blood go cold as he swallowed heavily. Out of a door behind the desk, Harry emerged, an unsettlingly calm smile on his face. There you are. Everyone was worried about you you know. Harry said, walking up to Luffy and kneeling in front of him. Luffy backed away, trying to get closer to Thatch and Marco who were still confused. What's happening? Thatch asked, noticing Luffy's fear, Marco too. Harry looked away from Luffy, standing to look at Marco and Thatch. You, my friends, just found yourself an escapee. Harry said cheerfully. An escapee, you Marco asked. Harry nodded. That's correct. You see, this is a hospital for children with mental problems. Our friend here has very serious issues that we try and take care of. He's highly delusional and sometimes dangerous. Just today he took down 10 guards during one of his delusions and ran out before we could get him. Harry said, and Luffy could only stare in shock. He wasn't deli deludi deli whatever the word was. I see, Marco said slowly, looking at Luffy who looked back, pleading in his eyes. MHM, now, I must get him back to his room before he becomes dangerous again. 
Thank you for returning him, Harris said, grabbing Luffy's hand and pulling. Luffy tried to fight back, but it didn't work. Could we come with you, to make sure he gets back safely? That chass, Luffy giving them more pleading looks, terror in his eyes. That won't be necessary, besides, he needs to go take his medicine, he'll be a little out of it, Harris said, basically dragging Luffy to the basement door. Help. Luffy mouthed the word as much as he could, hoping the two would help him, keep Harry from taking him back into the basement. They seemed to understand it, Thatch giving Marco a look. Marco, who was frowning, sighed, shook his head and muttered something before running up to Harry, kicking him to the side, and forcing the man to let go of Luffy. Alright. Seems we're doing this then. Thatch said in excitement as the woman at the desk gasped, pressing a button. Within moments the alarm was ringing again. Okay kid, now's a good time to take us to your brothers. You better not be delusional like that Dr. Guy said. That shouted, Luffy practically crying in relief. They were helping. They would be free. Luffy beamed at the two, nodding, and quickly flung the basement door open, grabbing both their hands and rushing down the stairs, into the dark labyrinth. Whoa, it sure is dark down here. Thatch said. Before anyone could say anything more on the subject a blue light flared, and Marco's hand was covered in blue flames, lighting the room. Better, Yuri. Do you know where you're going kid? Marco asked. Luffy nodded, ignoring his awe at the flames, and began running to the door in front of him, the two following close behind. All he had to do was follow Ace and Sabo's ways. They would lead him back to his brothers. It's like a maze in here. That said in awe as Luffy pushed door after door open. Then he smelled it, guards behind the next door. He backed away from it, Thatch and Marco giving him a look. What's wrong? Marco asked, both watching as Luffy lowered into a fighting stance. Ah, a fight, that's what all those people are then, huh? Thatch asked, having sensed the people behind the door. It was fling open, guards rushing in, and Luffy didn't even have to worry about fighting, as he watched Marco and Thatch charge ahead, knocking down every guard in their path with ease until they were all down. Let's go, kid, Marco said, Luffy watching in awe before nodding. He ran ahead again, following the waves, and after fighting another group of guards they were at the cell hall door. Luffy jiggled the knob, but it wouldn't open. It was locked again. Watch out, I got it yoy, Marco said, moving forward and kicking the door down. Luffy felt a rush of adrenaline as he ran into the cell hall, looking down and seeing the wave leading all the way to the end where their cell was. What the hell Thatch said in disbelief as he looked at all the cages. Luffy ignored him and bolted down the hallway, nearly crashing into the wall from his momentum. Is that 11,097? Did he get caught? Hey, 097, let us out too. Luffy ignored the children calling his number, opting for getting to his brothers. 11,097. Is it the kid? Thatch asked Marco, who only shrugged. They looked at the children in cells, gripping the bars with pleading eyes. What the hell was happening in here? Luffy waved his hands, needing Marco and Thatch to get the cell open for him. He could see Ace and Sabo in the back of it, but they looked unconscious which only made Luffy more worried. These are brothers, Yuri. Marco asked, peering into the cell. Luffy nodded quickly, wishing they would open the cell faster. They'll open the cell and then go get some more help. Thatch, find some keys and get everyone else out. Marco ordered Thatch, giving a nod of affirmation. Luffy decided not to mention the set of keys he had. He needed to get Ace's cuffs off before they found out he had a devil fruit. Ace had been adamant about keeping things secret, and he would make sure he did just that. There was a blast of blue flames, shocking Luffy momentarily until he noticed that the cell was now open. Marco and Thatch both ran back down the hall, but Luffy didn't mind as he rushed over to his brothers, shaking their shoulders. Ace. Sabo. Wake up. Wake up. Luffy yelled in a whisper. He didn't want Thatch and Marco to know he could talk, not until his brothers were up and told him it was okay. He may have dubbed them as good people, but what if they turned on them now that they saw what was happening here? What if they ended up wanting to test on them too? But they had kept their promise, so they weren't bad, right? Luffy wasn't going to risk it. Come on. We can go and we can be free, and we can keep our promise to Emily. Luffy urged as he unlocked Ace's cuffs, throwing them into the corner, hoping his brothers would open their eyes. They weren't dead, he knew that much. He could still feel emotions coming off of them, and he could still see their waves, even if they were fainter than normal. The two remained motionless though, only their chests moving as they breathed. Luffy fell silent, worry filling him. He could hear Thatch running back in the hallway, sounds of fighting, cells unlocking, and children escaping. Luffy ignored it all though, staring at his brothers, shaking them every few seconds. He didn't dare speak anymore, fear that someone would hear him overwhelming him, pushed on further by the fear that there was something wrong with his brothers. Hey, kid. A familiar voice spoke behind him, but he ignored it, shaking his brother's shoulders. Kid, come on, we're getting you all out of here. We can take your brothers to our doctors, they'll help them. At the word doctor, Luffy's heart dropped, spinning to face the man with white eyes. Thatch wasn't the only one there, two others were as well, one that looked like a lady, but wasn't, and another one who was really big. They had doctors too. 
Then they weren't really good guys after all Luffy felt terror take form, his breathing quickening as he backed away from them. They were almost free, they couldn't be caught again. They couldn't go back to more doctors. Doctors hurt them, and fed them horrible food, and left them in dark cold cells, and they were mean, and Luffy definitely did not want to see any more of them. Whoa, hey, calm down, what's wrong? That chast, raising his hands in the air. Luffy wanted to scream at them, but now he knew they were bad, so he couldn't let them know he could talk, they would try and hurt him more. Ace said not to talk to people, and now Ace and Sabo were both sleeping, and they wouldn't wake up. Luffy was practically hyperventilating. It's okay we're not going to hurt you, Thatch said, voice steady and calm. They had kept their promise before, so they had to be good people, but they had doctors, so they had to be bad people. The conflicting thoughts made Luffy's head hurt. Without warning, Thatch took a step forward and Luffy flipped. They were going to take them away. He might get separated from his brothers. He couldn't let that happen. Luffy didn't know what happened, but suddenly everything turned a weird shade of blue, the world freezing for a moment, and then Thatch and the two others were stumbling back a bit, looking like they were in pain. He did that kid just lady, yet not lady, started talking, shaking Luffy from whatever had just happened as he grabbed Ace and Sabo's arms, pulling them closer to him. Yeah, and it was damn strong too. The other really big guy said, giving Luffy a look. I don't really know what's going on kid, but trust me, we're not gonna hurt you, you brothers, or any of the other kids. We're gonna get them help. Promise. Thatch said, getting over whatever had happened. Luffy hesitated. He sounded sincere, and when Luffy focused on him his emotions felt only sinsomeness, no traces of darkness in them. But if he was good, why would he take them to doctors? Did he not know how bad they were? That they had done this to the brothers? Luffy was like a cornered animal, trapped and afraid, only wondering how they were going to escape the mess they were in. That seemed genuine, but there were doctors where he wanted to go so they couldn't be good. I don't know what I can say or do to get you to trust me, but from the looks of it, your brothers really need some help, and I can get that for them, you just have to come with us. Thatch said, his voice going soft, eyebrows slanted in worry. Luffy watched the man with apprehension, glancing at his brothers who still hadn't woken up, their waves more transparent than they had been before. Biting his lip and fighting the tears Luffy looked at Thatch again, nodding slowly. The man sighed in relief, but moved slowly, hands still up as he grew closer. Luffy was practically trembling in fear, wondering what he just agreed to. Ace was going to kill him when he woke up. I'm not gonna hurt him, promise, I'm just gonna carry one, Jozu, the big guy there, can't carry the other. Can you make it back to the ship? You look pretty tired. Thatch said. Luffy nodded, getting to his feet shakily, watching Thatch's every move as he bent down to pick Ace up, Jozu coming over and grabbing Sabo. The straw-hatted boy's heart rate increased at seeing his brothers now at the mercy of these strangers. He was hoping he'd made the right decision as he followed the two out of the cell. The hall was completely deserted, all the cell doors opened, and the cells themselves empty of any children. I'm Izo. Luffy was shocked out of his musings as he turned to look at Lady Not Lady who was walking beside him, giving him a small smile. Luffy searched their emotions, not finding anything bad, so he waved to them, giving them a wary smile in return. The group continued to make their way out of the facility, Luffy taking note of the many doctors and guards who laid unconscious on the ground. Damn it, I almost forgot, now we have to get out of this damn maze. Thatch cursed as they came to the first set of doors. You didn't leave any hints. Jozu asked incredulously, glancing at the doors. I didn't exactly have much time to leave breadcrumbs. Thatch whined in self-defense. Luffy looked at the two doors, remembering when he escaped this morning with Sabo. Without interrupting the two who were arguing Luffy walked to the door in front of them, opening it and walking through it. Aizo, seeing this, smiled and followed the young teen, leaving the two arguing in the room behind them. Seems you know the way out, huh? Aizo asked, laughing a little. Luffy, still highly uncomfortable but feeling the amusement rolling off the lady not lady, smiled back a little, nodding. Besides, why didn't you leave breadcrumbs? Aizo, tell him Aizo. Thatch finally noticed they had been left behind, seeing his brother and the boy in a straw hat passing through another door in the next room. Wait for us. Thatch shouted, running after the two, Jozu following and grumbling all the meanwhile. After the two caught back up Luffy let them through the maze, remembering every turn they made. When they reached the stairs Thatch cheered. Finally, we're out of that horrible darkness. Thatch said happily. They had been using a lighter that Thatch had had in his pocket to see, but now that they were out Iso, who had been holding it, closed it, placing it back in the chef's pocket. Yes Thatch, we're out, now let's get back to the Moby, we don't have all day, Izo said, glancing at Ace and Sabo. Luffy did the same and noticed with slight fear, that the wave hadn't stopped in getting more transparent. They were getting worse. Alright, alright, come on, it shouldn't take too long if we hurry, Thatch said, the group heading back in a brisk walk, Luffy doing his best to keep up. You know, I'm sure Jozu wouldn't mind giving you a ride if you wanted, you look tired, Izo said to Luffy who only shook his head in response. He wanted to at least be able to fight on his own terms if it came to it. 
Aizo sighed, but nodded as well, focusing back on Thatch and Jozu, who were in the middle of talking about who knew what. Almost there now, Jozu said when they reached the path leading to the beach. Thatch smiled brightly. I'm gonna have a lot of cooking to do today. I wonder what I should start with. Maybe a broth. I'm sure Whiskey will tell me when we get there. They must have looked over the other kids by now. That trembled, more to himself than to the group. Luffy's uneasiness only increased the closer they got to the beach. Soon, he was going to have to decide if he really did trust these people to help them, or try and fight them and somehow get away with his brothers. There it is, the Moby Dick Chapter 15. Checkups and Smelling Salts. There it is, the Moby Dick. Thatch exclaimed, more for Luffy than anyone else. Luffy gazed at the giant ship in amazement. It had a giant whale hide in the front, and the masts were taller than Luffy would have ever imagined any mast to ever be. He had always wanted to be a pirate, all of them had, but when they had been caught their dreams were put on hold in favor of escaping. Luffy remembered all the stories Sabo would tell him of pirates, but seeing the giant ship in real life was so much cooler than Luffy imagined it to be. Wait, were these guys pirates? There was a black flag raised high into the sky, Luffy just barely able to make out the skull and crossbones if he squinted. So they were pirates. Were they bad pirates like Blue Jam, or nice ones like in Sabo's stories? And if they were pirates why did they have doctors? Doctors hurt people, so wouldn't that mean these pirates were bad? The confusing thoughts made Luffy pause, Batch and Jozu already heading up the gangplank that was set out for easy access onto the boat. Aizo, who had been at Luffy's side the entire time, noticed the boys pause and stayed behind with him. It's a little overwhelming to see, is it not? Aizo asked, assuming the boy was amazed by the boat or finally figuring out they were pirates. Luffy snapped out of his conflicting thoughts and turned to look at Lady Not Lady, giving them a look that Aizo couldn't quite read. What did they say? Luffy hadn't been paying attention so he nodded, hoping he didn't get in trouble for it. Well that's alright, you get used to it. Moby's big, but that makes it nicer to sail on. There are lots of places to go. Aizo said, starting to move towards the gangplank as well, Thatch and Jozu just making it onto the ship's deck. Come on, I'm sure you want to be with your brothers, right? Aizo questioned with a raised eyebrow. Luffy hesitated once more, but noticed that there was no getting out of it now, so he slowly made his way up the plank, hoping he didn't do anything wrong, while he waited for Ace and Sabo to wake up. The two walked onto the deck, Luffy amazed by the giant expanse of space that there was, and the number of people as well. It made Luffy even more nervous, shifting from foot to foot restlessly when all eyes turned on him. He didn't like all the attention, what if they tried to hurt him? What if they pulled out needles and sea stone and tried trapping him again? Alright everyone, let's not scare him off, Aizo said with a pointed look, everyone who was staring openly going back to what they were doing. Aizo, I see you found the kid. Luffy watched as a familiar blonde made his way over to them. But I did Marco, poor thing, he was terrified when Thatch, Jozu and I got to him. We're heading to see Whiskey and the others about his brothers. Aizo said, looking at Luffy who was getting nervous again. He could feel Ace and Sabo getting further away, their waves stretching away from him, and he didn't like it. He wanted to be with them now. I'll come with you, Yuri. I've gotta talk to Whiskey anyways to give Oyaji a report. Marco said, the three beginning to make their way into the ship. When they were in a hallway Luffy practically sighed in relief, the feeling of being overcrowded slowly going away. Do you know how many kids there were? Aizo asked, the two ignoring Luffy for now, which the boy was thankful for as he listened in on the conversation. He wasn't as smart as Ace or Sabo, but he picked up on a few things the two always did, like listen to the doctors whenever they talked. I haven't gotten a count yet, but from what I saw there was at least 30, Yuri, Marco said, the two glancing at Luffy. Aizo frowned, wondering what that place had been, and why so many kids had been locked in cells. They reached their destination shortly after the comment, Aizo gesturing to the door. Your brothers are in there and I'm sure Thatch is still there as well. Jozu's probably gone by now though. Aizo explained, he and Marco watching the boys' reactions carefully. Luffy, apprehension clear on his face, nodded. He could smell the smells of antiseptic and alcohol, his nerves jumping faster at the familiar smell. He was twitchy, and he definitely didn't want to go in there, but Ace and Sabo were in there, so he should go too. The door opened, Marco having done it after seeing the boy's expression, and Luffy peeked inside, not moving from his spot. All the kids from the facility were laying on beds, tubes, and masks covering some of them, others merely laying silently, or sleeping. The room was certainly different from the lab, the whole room made of wood, but what was attached to the other kids? Were they doing tests? People who Luffy assumed to be doctors were milling around the room. They wore pink dresses and leopard print boots, which definitely wasn't what the other doctors had been wearing, but they were fiddling with the children's tubes and masks, taking notes on familiar clipboards. So they were doctors. Or maybe they were nurses, those people who helped the doctors. The facility had had a few people the doctors would call nurses, and all Luffy knew about them was that they helped the doctors do tests. So were these guys helping doctors? Doing tests for them? Go on, I'm pretty sure they're the ones in the back. 
Aizo urged softly, pointing to the back of the room to a couple of beds. In them lay his brothers, both covered in tubes and both wearing masks, concerning Luffy. What was happening to them? Taking a quick glance of all the nurses again, Luffy took a hesitant step into the room, some of the kids noticing and watching him as he did. Marco and Aizo were watching him, ready to follow, and none of the nurses had paid him any mind. Yet that is. Luffy walked quickly to the back to his brothers, doing his best to ignore everyone else. There was a nurse at their beds, looking over her clipboard and looking at the tubes connecting to them. Whiskey, this is the brother, the one that found me in Thatch, Yoi, Marco spoke behind him suddenly, making him jump as Whiskey spun to look at them. Oh? Alright kid, get into the bed so I can give you a checkup. Whiskey said gently, gesturing to the bed that was beside Ace. Luffy felt his fear returning at full speed. Checkup. Was she gonna do tests? It's alright kid, she's just going to help, Aizo said, reassuringly. Luffy glanced quickly between the two. If he didn't listen and they fought against him there was no way he could escape. Maybe he should go along with it until Ace and Sabo woke up, then they could escape together. He just had to listen and be good, so that they wouldn't hurt him before his brothers woke up. With a new resolve, Luffy made his way to the bed, sitting on it gently. It felt amazing. He had never sat on an actual bed in his entire life, and half of his life he had been sitting on a concrete floor, strapped to a metal table, or strapped to a wooden chair. All of those being highly uncomfortable. When he lit up whiskey was pulling a stool over in front of him, wheels on the bottom of it. We'll start off easy, what's your name? She asked. Luffy hesitated, opening his mouth, but closing it. Before anyone could explain that Luffy was muted or opened, Thatch coming in with something in his hand, a smile on his face. Hey Whiskey, I got it. Thatch said, walking up to them and handing the something over to the nurse. Thank you, Thatch, but that'll have to wait until after his checkup. Whiskey said, pointing her pencil in Luffy's direction, the boy shifting nervously on the bed. Ah, hey there kid. Thatch said, waving happily. Luffy hesitated but waved back. So, back to the question, name. Whiskey asked. He's mute, Yoi, Marco said, he and Izo standing beside Thatch, interested in Luffy. Whiskey raised an eyebrow. A mute, huh? Alright then, can you write? She asked. Luffy frowned. He could write, but if he admitted that then they would make him write everything down, and then there was no point in lying at all about the fact that he couldn't speak. Luffy shook his head no, the others frowning at the answer. How was he able to get your attention? Whiskey asked, scribbling notes down. He used a lot of gestures and mouthed a lot of words, me and Marco guessed what he was trying to tell us. Thatch said with a shrug. Another nod from the nurse. Well, if that's the case, do you have a number? Like the other children. Whiskey asked, the others raising an eyebrow at the question. A number, Yuri? Marco asked. Whiskey nodded, gesturing to all the other kids. That's right. Everyone here has a number tattooed on the inside of their wrists, all beginning with 110. She explained. Do you have one, then? Aizo asked Luffy, the boy fidgeting a bit more at the attention. It wouldn't hurt to show it to them, right? Besides, the nurse knew about the other kids' numbers, so it was inevitable that she would find his. Luffy nodded to them, holding out his arm and flipping his wrist up, showing the black numbers forever etched into his skin. 11,097. Well, we can call you seven if you want, you know, instead of kid. Whiskey suggested. Luffy saw no issue with that so nodded his agreement, placing his arm back at his side. Alright, next question, seeing as you can't speak that'll make things harder, but we'll manage. How old are you? Older than 10? Whiskey asked. Again, Luffy wanted to hide in a hole, but he couldn't not answer, what if they hurt him? What if they took his brothers away like Harry always threatened to do if he didn't listen? The only good thing about answering was that, if they knew his age, maybe they would underestimate him. Luffy nodded. Okay, higher than 10, is it higher than 15? She asked. Luffy shook his head. Okay, lower. Higher than 13? She asked. Luffy nodded. 14? She asked. Luffy nodded, Whiskey writing more stuff down. You're 14 I thought you were 10. Thatch said in shock. Luffy pouted, looking at the ground. It wasn't his fault he was short, they didn't give him a lot of meat in the facility. Thatch. Whiskey said in a warning tone. Thatch, noticing Luffy's expression, frowned. Ah, sorry, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You look youthful even when you're 70. Thatch rambled, trying to rectify the situation. Izo sighed. Shut up Thatch, lady not lady mumbled. Thatch laughed sheepishly but stopped talking. So you're 14. I'm going to give you a quick look over okay? No need to be afraid. Whiskey said calmly. She had been in charge of overseeing the other kids checkups, and all of them had freaked when a nurse got close enough to try. She had a feeling Luffy would be no different. She was right when the second she stood up, Luffy scrambled backward onto the bed. He hadn't meant to do it, especially after he promised himself he would cooperate, but it was a habit. Don't worry, I'm just checking to see how healthy you are. She said softly, the others watching carefully, ready if Luffy suddenly attacked. 
They had seen him ready to fight before, and Izo and Thatch had experienced the kid's strong hockey. Luffy did his best to sit still as Whiskey looked him over, relieved when she didn't prick him with a needle, or poke at him with the weird sharp metal things. Luffy took the time to focus on her emotions, finding no darkness, only calm, peaceful, and concentrated feelings coming from the nurse. When the exam was over Whiskey sighed, sitting back on her stool. Good news and bad news. Whiskey said, turning to the three observers. Good news first, Yoi, Marco said, crossing his arms. Whiskey nodded. Well, the good news is that he should be fine within a week, two at most. From what I could see there aren't many injuries at all, only spots that indicate that someone's been injecting him with something, and multiple marks that show he was probably burned that will scar. But that's the same with every child in this room. Bad news, if I'm right, he's been drugged up five ways to Sunday. Whiskey stated a slight edge in her tone. She couldn't believe that anyone would do this to a person, kids much less. What makes you say they were drugged, Yuri? Marco asked, his bored and tired look changing to a mildly interested one. Whiskey frowns. Well, that's easy. There are the puncture marks as I've already mentioned, but there's also the fact that every child in here hates even the thought of a needle going near them, as well as when examining one child, they practically begged us not to give them any more shots. Whiskey explained, glancing at all the kids. There's one more thing that has me a bit confused though. Whiskey began. What is it? Izo asked, looking at the brothers. Whiskey frowned. The thing is, everyone is malnourished, all the kids practically skin and bone, but these three have muscle. Whiskey said. Marco seemed to understand already, along with Izo, but Thatch still looked confused. So? Thatch asked, Whiskey sighing. So, that means that they were somehow gaining muscle even when starving. It also means they were getting the muscle after being in that place. If that muscle had been from before they arrived, it would have deteriorated the second they started starving. Whiskey explained, Thatch finally understanding. Maybe they were I don't know training. Thatch suggested weakly, but not believing it himself. It didn't look like that place had a workout room for them to train in after all. Meanwhile, Luffy, thinking the adults were more focused on their conversation, moved around the front of Ace's bed to stand in between both Ace and Sabo, who were still sleeping. Oh, that's right, you must be worried about your brothers, huh Seven? Whiskey asked the edge in her tone vanishing completely as she watched Luffy. All of them were watching Luffy now, noticing he had left the bed. Luffy fidgeted, looking at the group before turning to look back at his brothers. Their waves had gotten a lot better, so that meant these people were helping, right? But that didn't make sense because doctors hurt people, so why were they helping? What's wrong with the brothers? Izo asked. Anyone could see how much Luffy cared for them just by the way he looked at them alone. It would be a shame if something were to happen to them. Right, well, it seems like they're in a coma at the moment, a force one at that. I think one of the drugs they were given induced it, and at the moment I can't do anything to counteract the drugs for fear that one of the drugs doesn't mix well with the medicine and accidentally hurts them. Whiskey said, reaching for whatever Thatch had brought in earlier. So we just have to wait for them to wake up. Thatch asked. Whiskey nodded. That is one thing we could do, but I also have this. Whiskey said, holding up the item Thatch had brought him, though Luffy had absolutely no idea what it was, all he knew was that it smelled strong. Luffy's sense of smell was heightened, and it only made the strong smell worse as he scrunched up his nose, resisting the urge to cover it. It would look weird and the others might get suspicious, but that stuff was really starting to burn his nose. Oh yeah, what is it? Thatch asked, not having been told what it was in the first place. Whiskey smiled, moving over to Ace's bed, Luffy watching her closely as she placed the smelly stuff under his nose. He wasn't sure if that smelly stuff could hurt Ace, but the nurse had said it would help him wake up, so it had to be good. But what if she was lying? Luffy was going to keep his eye on her, and if his brother looked to be in pain or his wave got worse, he would intervene, even if he was trying to cooperate with them. It's a smelling salt, it helps in waking someone wake up because of its strong smell. It's not a guarantee, but it's worth a shot. I don't know how strong the drug is, so I don't know how much of an effect this will have on them. She said, not moving away from Ace for a minute before sighing. And it seems, in his case, Whiskey began, gesturing to Ace. It isn't going to work. She said, all of them frowning a little, though Luffy looked worse off, his frown deeper. It didn't work on Ace, but maybe it would work on Sabo. Luffy tugged on Whiskey's wrist gently, terrified, because he didn't know if she would hurt him for touching her, but he was going to risk it. What is it Seven? She asked. Luffy pointed at Sabo, and then to the smelly salt. Whiskey raised a brow. It might not work you know, so don't get your hopes up. She said softly. Luffy shrugged, after all, it was better than nothing. She nodded and moved over to Sabo's bed, placing the vial under his nose, Luffy wondering how someone made salt smell so bad. Nothing happened for a minute, and everyone thought it would be the same as with Ace, but then there was a groan, and Sabo was moving, eyes scrunching. Ugh what happened chapter 16. Back to square one. I'm back Oyaji. Whitebeard turned to face his son, the man just returning from the town on the island. 
Welcome back my son, what did you find out? Whitebeard asks. He has sent Vista to the town on the island, wondering if they knew about the place that had locked up dozens of children. Surely they must have known, it wasn't all that far from town, and they claimed to have explored all of the forest. The citizens confessed to knowing of the place in the forest, Vista informed a scowl on his face. Whitebeard felt the same, frowning. Why would anyone willingly let a place like that reside on their island? Did they give a reason as to why they never mentioned it? Whitebeard asks, Vista nodding. They said that they were told to keep it a secret by those who ran it. They were told that, if they told anyone about it, the people would take their children. This is said, Whitebeard's frown deepening as he hummed in thought. He understood the citizens' reasonings, but it still wasn't right, not when children were involved. Surely, if they had informed the proper people, they would come and get rid of the place before their children were taken. Anything else? Whitebeard asked. Vista nodded, twisting his mustache. The citizens said they felt bad for allowing it to go on as long as it did, and agreed to help bring the children back to their homes. Whitebeard nodded. At least the citizens were trying to help now, even if they hadn't when they truly should have. That'll help us out. Whiskey'll be out soon to give a report on all the children, I'll speak to her about it then. Thank you, my son. Whitebeard said, dismissing Vista who nodded, leaving to go help his division. So you're awake? Whiskey said with a smile, glad that at least one of the brothers was awake. Sabo, though, was immediately on guard, tensed and ready to fight. Whiskey and the others noticed Marco and Thatch, getting ready to move and hold him down, if he tried hurting the nurse, while Izu instinctively moved his hand to his gun. Whiskey back away a bit, knowing better than to get in the kid's face when he was ready to pounce. Where the hell am I? Sabo asked harshly, glancing around the room and seeing all the children from the facility in beds around him. He noticed that he himself was in a bed, and had to resist the urge to snuggle back into the comfy mattress and blankets. Looking around some more he saw Ace laying in a bed beside his, unconscious, with tubes connected to his arms, realizing he had them as well. He also looked at the people staring at him, noticing the nurse, who didn't look like any nurses from the facility, and three others, all looking ready to fight him if need be. And then, slightly behind the nurse, was Luffy, a bright smile that he hadn't seen in months on his face. Wait, what Sabo didn't get much chance to question what his little brother was doing in wherever they were before he was pounced on, the boy practically squeezing him to death. As happy as he was to see Luffy happy he was still thoroughly confused. Pulling the boy away from him lightly he scanned him for injuries. Now tell me, what the heck is happening? Sabo asked Luffy gently, but a no-nonsense tone hidden in it. Well that's kind of hard to do when, you know, he can't talk, and all Thatch said, confusion on his face. Did his brother not know that Seven was mute? Sabo looked from Thatch and then spun to face Luffy, eyes wide with shock. What do you mean you can't talk, what happened? Sabo asked, this time actually shouting. Luffy frowned, tapping his leg quickly, Sabo noticing. Calm down. Sabo almost glared at his brother. Now was not a time for him to be calm. He didn't know where he was, who these people were, or how in the hell Luffy had become mute. He was quickly turning into Ace. Luffy did a series of more inconspicuous taps that Sabo quickly read. Pretending can still talk. Sabo nearly burst out laughing from relief, his expression calming as he remembered the conversation Ace had had with Luffy about not talking to anyone. He hadn't expected Luffy to listen so well. Or take it so literally. Nice job, I didn't think you would listen to the hothead, Sabo said, ruffling Luffy's hair. Luffy grinned at the praise, choosing to ignore the slight insult. Uh what? That chast, he and the others moving into more relaxed positions, once they noticed Sabo was calming down. The blonde frowned, remembering there was an audience, and looked at Luffy who looked slightly unsure about the group. Sabo didn't blame him, the girl beside his bed was obviously a nurse, and Luffy only knew that anything doctor related was bad. Maybe you can give us more information seeing as your little brother can't speak. I'm Whiskey, by the way, the head nurse of this ship. Whiskey introduced. Ah, that explained the wood and the slight rocking motion Sabo felt. He was on a ship. He didn't know what ship, good or bad, but it gave him more of a sense of where he was. Before I'm answering any of your questions I need some of mine answered first, Sabo said carefully, sitting up in the bed, Luffy laying beside him, not wanting to leave his brother, now that he was awake. He could feel the warm feeling radiating off of Sabo and smiled. Of course, you're. I'm Marco, that's Thatch, and that's Aizu. Marco introduced, pointing to each person in front of him. Sabo nodded, storing the names with their faces. Well then, Marco, I would like to know where I am and what happened, Sabo said. The last thing he remembered was the guards overwhelming him, someone sticking a needle in his arm, and then passing out, hearing Ace and Luffy fighting a few rooms away. You're on the Moby Dick, our pirate ship. We're the Whitebeard Pirates. As for how you got here, Yuri, that would be thanks to your brother there. Marco said, gesturing to Luffy who smiled sheepishly when Sabo looked at him. Refocusing Sabo realized what Marco had just said. They were on the Whitebeard Pirate ship. Sabo had heard about them, even as a kid, and recognized Marco to be the first mate and first division commander. 
Yeah, Marco and I were just walking back to the ship when he came barreling out of the forest like a madman. Since he couldn't talk he just did a bunch of gestures and mouthed some words, but we eventually understood that he needed help. That said, interrupting Marco from telling the story, which earned him a glare from the first commander. He led us to the place you were held at and took us to the cells where we got all the children out. You and your brother were unconscious so we brought you back here. Marco finished, Sabo absorbing all the information carefully. If Luffy had led them to the facility it meant he trusted them to some extent, and they, so far, hadn't done anything to harm them, though Sabo knew that could change in an instant. The blonde sat, silent for a moment as he thought, glancing at Luffy and then Ace. So far, their best option was staying on these pirates' good side until Ace was awake and then they could leave. They may be nice now, but they were pirates, and after not having freedom for seven years, Sabo wasn't going to let him, or his brothers, be trapped anywhere else. At this point in time, though, Sabo decided to trust Luffy's instincts. If Luffy thought they were good then they probably wouldn't turn on them anytime soon, and it would be too much of a hassle to keep a secret anyway. Good. Sabo discreetly made the sign to Luffy, having to reassure himself that Luffy truly did feel they were good. Luffy looked at them all once more for a moment before nodding to Sabo who sighed. Well, I guess it's okay for you to talk then, Sabo said, confusing the pirates. What are you talking about? Aizu asked, watching Sabo. Suddenly, Luffy exhaled a breath of air, as if he'd been holding his breath, and turned to Sabo, a glare on his face. You guys are big meanies. We were all supposed to get out, not just me. Luffy shouted angrily, Sabo already prepared for the outburst. It was funny to see the pirates' reactions though. Why you can talk, you could talk the entire time, Thatch sputtered, Luffy's anger momentarily forgotten as he turned to look at the man, grinning. Ah ma'am. But they said not to, so I didn't. Luffy said proudly, Sabo chuckling quietly at the answer. Have you told them anything? Sabo asked, getting Luffy's attention back. The teen shook his head. I haven't said nothing, cause you guys said not to so I didn't, not even my name. Luffy said proudly, the pirates still getting over their shock, though Marco hadn't looked all that shocked in the first place. He had only raised an eyebrow. Good job. What have they been calling you? Sabo asked, curious. Seven, Luffy said nonchalantly as if it really were his name. Seven. Why? Sabo asked, looking back to the others for an answer. His tattoo. I noticed all the kids had numbers on their wrists, and when your brother didn't tell us his name, I used the last number of his tattoo, 11,097, or 7. Whiskey explained. Sabo nodded, looking at his own tattoo. Well, in that case, I would be 5, Sabo said, holding his wrist up and showing his tattoo. Oh, and A, ah he would be 2. Luffy said excitedly as if it were game as he pointed to Ace, nearly giving away his name. Sabo nodded his agreement and Luffy grinned back. It was strange, Luffy had practically reverted back to his old self, as if the last seven years hadn't happened. That wasn't quite right though. As Sabo looked closer at Luffy he could see the boy shifting non-stop, fidgeting with his fingers, his eyes darting around the room when someone moved, which happened a lot because nurses were everywhere, checking on other children. Sabo could also see him scrunching up his nose, and it wasn't to tell him that someone smelled. Sabo could smell the chemical smell of an infirmary, and the smell set his nerves on edge at the memories of the lab, but for Luffy, the smell was much worse for his heightened sense of smell. They were both ready to bolt out of the room, but Sabo only hoped he was hiding his unease better than Luffy was. Why don't you want to tell us your names? Aizu asked, Sabo, giving the lady man an indecipherable look. If you had just been in a place where your life was carelessly thrown around like a toy by people who called themselves human, and then woke up in a new place with strangers who are pirates, would you be ready to tell them all about yourself? Sabo asked, his voice calm but a frown growing on his face with every word, Luffy looking at his hands, frowning as well. He could feel the anger and sadness in Sabo and didn't like it one bit. The only thing he ever wanted Ace and Sabo to feel were the happier emotions, like excitement or joy, or his favors, the warm feeling, or love. Aizu and Thatch were openly gaping at Sabo, while Marco was frowning, arms crossed at the words, wanting more than anything to find out what had happened in that place. Exactly, Sabo said, more to himself. He turned to look at Luffy, seeing the boy's frown and realized his own negative emotions. Sometimes, if Ace or Sabo felt any negative emotions, they would rub off on Luffy, and he'd feel them as if they were his own, whether he meant to or not. He took a deep breath, trying to feel calm again, sending pulses of love to Luffy, hoping to cheer the boy back up. So what happened to, ah, uh, to? Sabo asked, looking at their older brother who was still unconscious. It was silent for a minute, no one answering him, until Whiskey cleared her throat, turning to look at a clipboard with Ace's information on it. Well, he, along with you and Seven, have been injected with a wide variety of drugs, one of them causing him to fall into a coma. You were in one as well, but we used smelling salts to wake you up. We tried them on two as well, but they had no effect. Whiskey informed, looking up from her papers. Speaking of, I need to check you over and make sure there were no side effects to that drug. Whiskey, said, Sabo, fidgeting at the thought. 
He still definitely didn't trust these people, but Luffy smiled to him. I gotta check up too. She didn't hurt me like Luffy stopped himself, frowning as memories of the lab came to mind. Alright, let's get this over with. Hey, Seven, I bet I'll finish my checkup faster than you did. Sabo said the words without even thinking. He hadn't meant to so easily agree to the checkup, but when he saw Luffy's face he knew he had to distract him somehow. It worked, Luffy's frown disappearing completely as Sabo sat up straighter, sitting on the edge of the bed so Whiskey could look him over, having taken off the tubes that were attached to his arm. Ach and Aizu were sharing a glance, both having heard what Luffy was about to say, and not liking where it was heading or the way he had stopped so abruptly. They couldn't ask about it though, not wanting to bring back the despairing look on the teen's face. Marco was thinking much the same things, except he hid his observations, reminding himself to talk to Aoyaji about it later. Whiskey did a checkup on Sabo, asking his age which, after a moment's thought, he gave after learning Luffy had given his. 17, and for future reference, how old is 2? Whiskey asked, pointing at Ace with her pencil. He's also 17, older than me by a few months, Sabo replied, seeing no harm in giving out that information. If anything they could underestimate them, and when the time came, because it would, they could take the pirates by surprise, with not only their fighting skills but their powers. That's all for now. Thatch, you should go prepare lunch for everyone, but keep it light, a broth or some sort of soup would be good to get their stomachs used to eating again. Whiskey said, looking up from her clipboard. Thatch looked torn, wanting to stay and talk to the three brothers, but also wanting to help by making food. With a sigh he nodded, waving his goodbyes and leaving the infirmary. I'll go as well, who knows what kind of trouble my division's gotten into, Aizu said, saying his goodbyes as well as he followed Thatch out, leaving Marco and Whiskey with the boys. So, you wanted to ask questions. I'm gonna warn you, they'll either be extremely vague or nothing at all until two wakes up. Sabo said, readjusting to lay back down on the bed, Luffy snuggling into his side. I understand, Yuri. Why don't we wait a few days for you three to heal up and we'll talk then? Marco asks. There was nothing more he wanted than answers, Oyaji as well, but at this rate, they would only get more questions than answers. If he let the brothers take some time to get to know them, trust them more, then it would be an easier talk. That would be good, they need to rest right now, especially Seven, you practically exhausted yourself. Whiskey chided, the boy looking sheepish, curling into Subo further. That's fine, by the way, Whiskey, Oyaji wants a report when you can, Yoi, Marco said, the nurse nodding. I'll finish up a few things and head over. Thank you, Commander. She said, the man nodding and leaving the room as well. Now that the brothers weren't crowded anymore they felt a little more at ease, but not too much. There was still nurses covering every inch of the room, and the smell of medicine put them both on edge to the point that they couldn't fully relax. This, coupled with the fact that they were in unfamiliar territory with who knew how many strangers on board the same ship made for two very restless teens. How about your turn to your bed 7, so you can both get some rest before lunch? Whiskey ass, gesturing to the empty bed beside Ace. Luffy hesitated, gripping Sabo's shirt tightly in his hands, the older frowning at the thought of separating, even if only by a few bed lengths. I think it would be best he stay here. We'll be fine this way. Sabo said though it was more of a statement than a suggestion. Whiskey, though she looked like she wanted to argue, merely nodded. If you need anything you can ask any of the nurses in here. I'm going to go take care of some things, but I'll be back before lunch if you two want to take a nap, which I recommend you do. She said with a pointed look. Sabo nodded in affirmation, though didn't plan on going to sleep anytime soon. Whiskey, taking the nod as an answer, said her goodbyes, leaving the two and exiting the room. None of the nurses have bad colors or feelings, but don't nurses and doctors hurt people? Luffy mumbled softly, face buried in Sabo's side as he continued to grip the fabric tightly. Sabo frowned, not quite sure how to explain to the young teen that not all doctors were bad. We ran into the bad kind of doctors Lou, Sabo started, speaking softly, so no one could overhear the two talking. Doctors and nurses are supposed to help people, but we ran into the bad kind a dozen. Now we just have to stay on guard and make sure these people aren't bad too. Sabo continued, rubbing circles on his brother's back. They remained silent for another few minutes before Sabo spoke up this time. You should try and get some sleep, I'll wake you up for lunch, Sabo said, looking at Luffy's head, face still buried. Am am. I'm tired. Luffy mumbled out, trusting his brother would keep them safe while he took a little nap. Luffy moved, settling into a comfier position before dozing off, still holding on to Sabo. The blonde smiled at him, looking back up to the room. The kids from the facility were all quiet, all watching the nurses nervously. A few were sleeping, looking healthy enough, and Sabo guessed they were a few of the ones who had just arrived at the facility the day before. Doing a quick count Sabo found that there were 32 children in all, including him and his brothers. He recognized a few of the children from testing or training, and was happy they had been able to keep their promise to Emily, even if these weren't the same kids from back then. An hour passed, or at least Sabo thought it was an hour, when the door opened, Whiskey walking back in. 
Sabo could also hear the sounds of the cart coming, and was reminded of the food cart in the facility. Thatch walked in next, rolling a cart with a big pot of something on it, bowls and spoons surrounding the pot. Sabo was about to wake Luffy, thinking this must be their food, but the boy was already waking up on his own, sniffing. Smells good. Luffy mumbled, still tired, but awake from the smell of food. Sabo smiled, smelling the air as well. He couldn't smell as well as Luffy, no one could, but he caught the faint smell of what he presumed to be soup, his mouth watering at how good it smelled. Everyone's stomachs were growling, none of them having been fed since breakfast, which the brothers hadn't gotten, and even then it was the same horrible slop. Lunch time. Thatch said surely, already ladling soup into bowls and handing them to nurses. We'll come around with bowls, everyone just stay in your beds. Whiskey said calmly, helping pass bowls out. Sabo and Luffy watched, their stomachs growling louder than anyone else's, as children got their food, digging in quickly and practically crying at the taste. When they were finally given a bowl from a nurse, the two gave each other a look. Might as well, no one else has fallen over, Sabo said, looking at the others who weren't dropping dead from poison. He wasn't worried about Luffy, after literally dying from who knew how many poisons at once he had developed a high resistance to poison, his body able to fight off most. Sabo took a spoonful, taking a small sip. It was amazing. It was better than anything he'd ever had before, and he barely remembered to use the manners he'd grown up using, as he ate faster than he ever had before. Encouraged by the reaction Luffy began eating as well, though didn't have any restrictions when it came to eating messily. Instead of using a spoon Luffy tipped the bowl back, drinking the entire thing in one go. That was delicious. Saw five. It's way better than anything we've ever had. Luffy prays, eyes wide and smiling happily. Sabo smiled back, agreeing with his brother. It is. Two's going to be pretty jealous when he wakes up. Sabo said, looking at Ace who was still unconscious. Luffy went quiet for a moment, also looking at Ace, before speaking up. Do you think he can hear us talking? Luffy asked, staring at his brother's wave. He always thought that Sabo and Ace's waves were such a pretty shade of color, and wished his brothers could see them too. Some say that people in a coma can hear you. They even say that if you talk to them it might help them wake up. Sabo turned at the voice, Whiskey, and Thatch standing beside Sabo's bed. Really Luffy asked, turning hopeful looks at the two. MHM. I'm sure he would love to have some company. Whiskey said with a smile. Luffy brightened even more, if possible after how big his smile was after the meal, and jumped off Sabo's bed, rushing over to Aces and taking his brother's hand. N A2. I know two's not your name, but we can't tell the others our names so we're using numbers. I'm seven, but one would be cooler. Or maybe ten. I don't know. Oh. We just had some really good food though, way better than what they had back at the facility. Did you know that we're out of there now? We're with some pirates, but they're good ones so you don't have to worry. Or, at least I think they're good now, big hair, are you guys good pirates? The three listened as Luffy rambled to Ace, Sabo laughing at Luffy's nickname and Thatch sputtering, Whiskey smiling. Be big hair my name's Thatch. Thatch said, placing a hand on his hair and pouting. Oh, okay, big hair says his name is Hatch, but he didn't answer my question. These people are weird there was even this one guy who barely had any hair at all, and another who was really big, and another one who looks like a girl, but they're a man. Luffy said, attention back on Ace in an instant. And you should wake up soon, cause we're all out of the facility now, even the other kids. So that means we kept our promises. And I didn't cry once, so I kept my promise too. Luffy said proudly. The three continued to watch Luffy talk to Ace, smiling, until Whiskey thought of something, turning to Sabo. The townspeople on this island promise to help return kids to their homes. The longest anyone, besides you three, need to heal is a few days while your brother there needs a week or two. The plan so far is to have all the children head home, but we can't stay docked at one island too long, especially one not under our control. Marines would send ships to investigate, so to avoid the unnecessary fighting we were planning on allowing you three to stay with us while we sail until two is completely healed, and we can return you to your home island. Whiskey explained. Sabu frowned, his worry and fear beginning to raise its ugly head. He and Luffy had been playing nice to these people, cooperating and answering their questions the best they could, but now they would be staying with them for weeks. Every instinct in Sabo's body screamed to get him and his brothers out, now, but he didn't know how to do that. Sure, he and Luffy might be able to take on a few of these pirates, but what happened when they did? Where would they run? They could run onto the island, but that was where the facility was. What if the doctors got away and were looking for them? Sabo didn't even know where in the world they were, East Blue, West Blue, South Blue, North Blue, or even the Grand Line. Sabo couldn't even come up with a reply to Whiskey, instead, he stared blankly at the blanket covering his legs, face neutral, yet mind in complete chaos. Luffy must have noticed his emotions because the boy paused in his ramblings to Ace to turn towards him, glancing at Thatch and Whiskey. He didn't know what was happening, but Sabo was beginning to experience the bad emotions, so Luffy crawled into the bed with him, trying to ease the feelings the best he could. 
Sabu smiled to Luffy, happy to be near the younger, before turning back to the other two. He still didn't know what he was going to say to them, but he had had to say something. He had been silent for too long, and no matter how much thinking he did it wouldn't progress the conversation anymore to be quiet. We thank you for your concern as well as for giving us the means to heal, Sabo said finally, his voice almost too calm, a forced smile on his face that he hoped was convincing enough for the pirates in front of him to accept. It seemed to work because they both smiled back, thinking nothing of his lapse of silence. It's no problem 5, just trying to help, Thatch said happily. Sabo held back a sigh of relief, Luffy calming down when his brother's emotions calmed as well. Onto more interesting news, I've looked over some blood that I drew from too, and found what drug was forcing him into a coma. I don't know all the side effects it'll have until he wakes up. From there it's a matter of getting the rest of the drugs out of all of your systems, and helping fix the malnutrition. As the nurse explained this Sabo pulled Luffy closer, both looking at Ace. As soon as he was up they could work on getting out of here. Chapter 17. Keep your composure. It had been three days since the brothers and other children from the facility had been taken to the pirate ship. By then, as promised by the pirates, most of the children had been taken to the town on the island and sent home. There were only three more children here, one Sabo and Luffy recognized as kids who had been at the facility for almost two full weeks. They were getting final checkups from their nurses, getting ready to leave that day. No one spoke about the facility to anyone, not even kids who had been there for a few days. It was like an unspoken agreement that, no matter what, they weren't going to say a word about it. Because of this, though, the pirates only became more curious, wanting to know what the big deal was about the place they had been held captive in. The nurses and their occasional visitors, i.e. Thatch and Marco, noticed that all of them, everyone from the facility, had common fears. Whenever any one of them saw a needle they freaked, trying to get as far away as they could. Everyone was also just generally afraid of the nurses, so the nurses had done their best not to hover or stay too close for too long. Sabo and Luffy watched in what was almost jealousy as the last few kids left, going off to their homes, smiles on their faces. The two brothers hadn't been allowed out of their beds too long, their malnutrition much worse than the other children, so they were getting more than a little restless from being in bed for so long. Not only that, but the smells of the infirmary were setting Luffy and Sabo on edge more and more every day. It never left, and Luffy was even getting headaches from it due to his sense of smell. The feeling of being trapped in the room didn't help either, and overall the brothers were filling with anxiety and desperation to get out. Ace was still sleeping though, and the brothers really didn't want to leave him alone, not in a room full of nurses who could do who knew what to him, but Marco had said their captain would want to speak to them soon. If that was the case they would probably have to leave the room soon, both a good and a bad thing. Lunchtime. Thatch called happily, walking into the room with a platter in his hands. Now that it was only the three brothers Thatch didn't need to bring in the rolling cart which Sabo and Luffy were grateful for, the sound of it only bringing back bad memories. One of the good things about being on the pirate ship was that they got three full meals a day that actually tasted and looked like good food. They had been eating light foods, broths, oatmeal, rice, etc. Whiskey said they would be able to eat heavier food soon, their stomachs adjusting well to the food. They were given normal portions, which Sabo realized made sense, but Luffy needed to eat much more than that in a day, so he had been sharing his food with him. They both didn't want to ask too much of the pirates, afraid that the wrong question or request would turn the pirates on them. Yummy. Luffy said, licking his lips as he was handed a plate with a few different things on it. There was rice, applesauce, and yogurt with bananas. There was even a sandwich, which they hadn't had before. Luffy began to dig in, Sabo as well, though at a much slower pace. Thatch was easy to open up to, though Sabo was still very guarded near the man despite this, he was a pirate after all, and the brothers found themselves much more comfortable around him. That wasn't to say that the second he did something they didn't like they wouldn't turn on him. They were practically waiting for one of the pirates to show their dark side, the evil that they were convinced everyone had. So, how has your day been? Thatch asked, sitting at the end of their bed as he waited for Sabo to finish, Luffy already licking his plate clean, literally. As good as it can be when you're stuck sitting in a bed, Sabo said with a nonchalant shrug, trying to force his anxiety down and give off an air of calmness. He was pretty sure he succeeded, Thatch giving him a smile and laugh. Yeah, well Whiskey said that you might be able to get up today. She was talking about it to Pops earlier. Thatch explained, grabbing Luffy's plate as the teen handed it to him. Oh? That would be nice, right Seven? Sabo asked, his little brother nodding happily. Yeah ma'am. I wanna get out of bed, but every time I try five tells me to lay back down. Luffy said with a pout. He understood why, both brothers didn't want to get on the nurse's bad side, and that meant, for the moment, listening to her instructions. Unless she told them to do something that they definitely were not going to do. It's for your own good seven, besides, I'm sure too would miss you if you were running off while he was still stuck in bed, Sabo said, removing his brother's straw hat and messing with his hair, Luffy sweating at his hand, but smiling nonetheless. The door opened and their attention turned to Marco and Whiskey, the two walking in together. 
Oh hey Marco, welcome back. Thatch announced, smiling to the first mate. Marco nodded to him. Did you leave lazy face? Luffy asked, everyone, turning to give him a questioning look, while Sabo paled a bit. Even though Luffy didn't mean to be rude his nicknames could seem that way sometimes, and when you were trying to stay on someone's good side, it wasn't the best idea to make fun of the way they looked. Lazy face, you're... Marco asked, an eyebrow raised in confusion. Sabo coughed, nudging Luffy slightly as a show to get him to stop talking, the boy understanding, even if he wasn't all too sure why. Ah, uh, Seven has a tendency to give people nicknames, he doesn't mean any offense behind his words, Sabo said cautiously, helping to ease the situation before it became an issue. Luffy didn't quite understand the words Sabo said, but assumed he had done something wrong, so he nodded his agreement. He didn't want to make anyone mad, the man just had a lazy face, always looking like he was tired or bored, and Luffy, for the life of him, couldn't remember his name. No, it's fine, and yes Seven, I did leave, Marco explained, his face returning back to his bored expression. Sabo sighed in relief, happy the issue didn't escalate. Well, where'd you go? Luffy asked curiously, tilting his head. I was escorting the rest of the kids to the town, Yoi, Marco explained, Luffy looking at him with more confusion. Escorting? The teen butchered the word, Sabo shaking his head. Escorting seven, he went with the kids, Sabo explained what practiced ease. It was a regular occurrence that Luffy didn't know a word that someone said, and the blonde would have to translate for him. Oh? I get it. Luffy said, beaming while the others watched him, Thatch smiling, Marco not changing his expression and Whiskey not paying any mind to the conversation, instead checking over Ace. Sabo was sure to keep an eye on her as she did. So I take it they got there okay? Thatch asked, Marco nodding. Watch them sail off myself. Two were going to South Blue, and the other was going to North Blue, Yuri. Marco said to Thatch. That raised a question in Sabo's mind, one he'd been wondering for a while now. That reminds me, where are we, obviously not in those two blues, but are we in any of the blues? Sabo asked, Luffy watching with interest. He had never left on island, so anywhere else was cool to him, but what if they were super far away? You don't know? This is the Grand Line, or as we know it, Paradise. Thatch said, frowning to the boys. Sabo frowned as well. So they weren't in any of the blues. That would make it harder if they tried to escape, Sabo had read books on the Grand Line, and knew about the unpredictable weather patterns, as well as the fact that normal compasses didn't work. Grand Line huh? Sabo asked softly, though he could feel Luffy practically jittering from excitement. Really that's so cool. Saw so, uh, 5, did you hear that we're in the Grand Line? Luffy exclaimed, practically laughing in delight. Sabo forced a smile, nodding to Luffy's words, but not really meaning it. He tried to keep his emotions calm, not wanting Luffy to sense his rapidly growing unease, but it was hard to when there were so many things wrong with the situation they were in. How's to, Yuri? Marco asked his attention on Whiskey who was finishing her examination. Whiskey turned to face him, shrugging and sighing. Overall he's much better than a few days ago, but he's still not awake. The last of the unknown drugs have been cleared out of his bloodstream, but whatever made him fall into the coma has yet to leave, making it harder for him to wake him up. We were lucky that Five woke up at all seeing as even he still has the drug in his bloodstream. Whiskey said with a frown, tapping her pencil on her chin. Lighten up Whiskey, everything will work out in the end. Thatch said, waving off the nurse's concerns, trying to lighten the mood. Whiskey frowned for another minute, but sighed. I guess you're right Thatch. Anyways, you two are finally free to move around a bit. I don't want you two running or doing any heavy lifting or physical labor though. No straining your bodies and the second you start to get even the thought that you're getting tired, I want you back in bed. Whiskey ordered sternly, the boys fidgeting under the look, their unease rising at the order. Luffy nodded mutely, trying to keep a frown from forming on his face, as he thought of Harry when he got mad. He was always punished whenever he didn't obey an order, and he was scared that the nurse would hurt him or his brothers if he didn't listen. Sabo nodded in much the same way Luffy had, also having thoughts of the doctors ordering them to do things whether they wanted to or not, and how they were forced to obey. Pleased by their obedience Whiskey nodded, turning her attention back to her clipboard, and walking away to talk to another nurse in the room. Thatch whistled. And that's why Whiskey's the head nurse. She sure can be stern when she wants to. Thatch said, watching the girl in pink walk off. Sabo tried to shake off the bad memories and feelings, returning his face to a more neutral look, and sending feelings of love to Luffy, hoping to calm the boy. Seeing as you two are free to move why don't we go head out on deck? You could speak to Ayaji as well, Yuri. Marco said, and suddenly the feelings of unease were back, Sabo's mouth going dry and stomach fluttering, legs going weak. He had picked up over the conversations he'd had with the pirates that Oyaji, or Pops, was another name for their captain, Whitebeard. If they were going to talk to Whitebeard they couldn't have anything going wrong. One wrong move, one wrong word, and they could lose the only safety they had. They had no way of leaving the boat, and even if they did they had no way of navigating back home. Luffy seemed to pick up on how important Marco's words were, feeling Sabo's growing nerves. He was beginning to experience the same thing. 
On one hand, he wanted out of the room, but what about Ace? And what about when they did go out there and they had to talk to whoever Oyaji was? He could smell a lot of people outside of their room, and he didn't want to face any of them. He and Sabo had tried guessing how many there were. Sabo using his hearing to try and distinguish just how many voices there was and Luffy using his smell to figure out how many different scents were out there, but neither of them could pinpoint just how many there were, their guess only going into the hundreds. Yeah, Pops has wanted to speak to you too since you got here. Thatch said with a smile, cleaning up the dishes from lunch and getting ready to leave. Sabo swallowed, though his throat was as dry as his mouth, and gave a weak nod and smile. They couldn't say no, it was Whitebeard, you didn't deny his request of talking, but Sabo had been hoping for a little more time. Luffy rubbing his fingers together grabbed Sabo's attention though. What about Ace? Luffy signed to him through a series of discreet taps that the other two pirates didn't notice. Sabo hesitated, trying to think fast. I can still hear things happening in here, I'm sure if they try something I'll hear them talking about it, and we can run back. Sabo tapped back, though even he wasn't happy with that plan. What if the nurses didn't discuss what they were going to do and instead just went right to injecting their brother, or hurting him? They wouldn't be there to stop them. But there's a lot of people out there. Luffy tapped, shifting at the thought. Sabo tried to send him calm feelings, but it was hard when they were both on the edge of having panic attacks. I'll be with you the entire time. If we want to leave we will, no matter what. Sabo said, trying to ease both Luffy and himself. Do you want to go now, Yuri? Marco suddenly spoke up, oblivious to the brothers communicating. Sabo and Luffy most certainly did not want to go right now, but they didn't want to annoy the pirates so, begrudgingly, Sabo nodded, putting up a mask of calm and indifference. It would be nice to get out of here for a bit, Sabo said, trying to keep the strain from his voice. Luffy was staring at Ace which Thatch noticed as he picked up the platter, ready to go. Don't worry Seven, your brother's gonna be here with the nurses the whole time. Thatch said with a smile, and though Thatch had tried to comfort them the thought of Ace being left with nurses didn't help them any more than telling someone who was drowning that they were surrounded by water. Come on Seven, let's go get some fresh air, Sabo said gently, both of them carefully stepping out of the bed they shared. Though they would be leaving Ace the thought of fresh air did help them slightly, their legs shaky from anxiety. They were both suffering from headaches, Luffy's worse than Sabo's, and the smells and sounds gave the two horrible flashbacks to the labs. All the nurses surrounding them also made them uneasy, and the two had a hard time sleeping, taking turns instead so one could keep guard. Getting out of the room would help the brothers, but it could also hurt them. Let's get going then, Yuri. We can go up to the main deck, that's where Oyaji is. Marco explained, heading towards the door, Thatch at his side and Luffy and Sabo following, sending one last glance at Ace's sleeping form. Remember, the second you're tired come back. Whiskey called as they left the room. The brothers' anxiety spiked as the door closed, and they both had to force themselves to not run back into the room, and instead follow the two pirates in front of them. Luffy was gripping Sabo's hand tightly in his, the boy's eyes shifting in every direction, taking in every speck of the hallway they were walking in, Sabo watching the pirates' backs intently. The two in front of them were talking, Sabo listening to a random conversation about someone named Drakio getting back safely from a mission earlier that day. Luffy was looking at their surroundings, but also keeping an eye on Ace's red wave, watching for any signs that his brother's health was being harmed. Over the few days, his wave got less and less transparent, though it was still just barely transparent enough to see through. Sabo's wave had gotten so dark it was solid, and Luffy took that as a sign that his brother was completely healed, whereas Ace was still healing. As they got closer to the door at the end of the hall, the noises Sabo heard got louder and louder, the number of people talking nearly overwhelming him, as he realized what they were about to walk out to. Luffy was smelling the air, becoming overwhelmed as well with just how many people he smelled on the deck, and tried to focus on the fainter smells, like the ocean's salty air, or the faint smell of alcohol somewhere out on the deck. Everyone's been wanting to see you guys, they wanted to know if you were okay. Thatch said suddenly, shocking them out of their thoughts. Sabo asked, keeping his mask up, though the words Thatch said didn't make him or Luffy any more calm. Back at the facility they had always been the center of attention for both the doctors and the children. They were the oldest, the survivors, the golden children, the successes, and because of it, they never got a break from testing or training. They hated the attention, and to hear that they were the center of attention here on a pirate ship as well wasn't even mildly comforting. Luffy grip on his hand tightened, and Sabo didn't mind the pain that was beginning to take form from the death grip. It was probably the only thing keeping him grounded, sane. There wasn't even a warning as Marco pushed the door open, the two pirates walking out onto the deck and leaving the brothers in the hallway. It was now or never. They could walk out on that deck into a million unknowns, or they could run back to Ace and stay where they at least knew their enemy. If they did that though, it would only bring up unwanted questions, and they had made it that far already, so they might as well keep going. Come on Lou, let's get this over with, then we can go hang out with Ace for the rest of the day. Just stay quiet, I'll do all the talking. Sabo said quietly to his brother, squeezing his hand reassuringly. 
Luffy nodded, trying to wipe the frown from his face. They both took deep breaths before walking out on deck. The first thing they noticed was the overwhelming number of pirates on the ship's deck. The second thing they noticed was how huge the deck and ship itself was. The third thing they noticed was that everyone's attention was on them. The last thing they noticed was how bright it was. The two brothers momentarily forgot about the number of eyes staring at them, the hundreds of pirates surrounding them, the fact that they were on a pirate ship altogether. They were much more focused on the sun, the air, the ocean. They hadn't been outside in seven years, except Luffy, but the boy had been much more focused on other things to even remember what the sun felt like at that moment. Now, though, they were both staring up at the sky in amazement, both basking in the warmth that the sun gave them, both enjoying the feeling of the ocean breeze brushing over their skin. Within moments Sabo remembered where they were and snapped out of it, focusing back on the pirates and squeezing Luffy's hand to refocus his attention as well. Everyone was staring at them silently, no one making a sound, and Sabo and Luffy had to force themselves not to start fidgeting under their intense stares. Noticing their unease Marco finally spoke up, snapping everyone out of their dazes. Alright everyone, back to work, Yoi, Marco ordered, everyone quickly going back to what they were doing. Oh, ah, uh, sorry, everyone here is easily amused. Thatch said sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head. Luffy and Sabo didn't reply, too focused on how many people were there in the first place. Boyaji's this way, Marco said, gesturing ahead of them, walking off with Thatch at his side again, Luffy and Sabo hesitantly following. It didn't take too long to reach the literal giant who was sitting in an equally giant chair, and also a giant cup of sake in his hand, Luffy recognizing it as the alcohol smell that he had noticed in the hallway. Boyaji, this is Seven and Five. Seven is the one that found Thatch and I on the island, Yuri. Marco announced, gesturing to the brothers who, this time, were fidgeting under the gaze of the captain. At his side was Usabo assumed to be all the commanders, Thatch and Marco moving to join them, making for a very intimidating scene. Sabo swallowed, taking a deep breath and squeezing Luffy's hand before bowing to the man. Luffy, not understanding much, bowed as well, mimicking his brother. He didn't have a clue what was happening, but Sabo was smart, so he would follow his brother's lead. It's a pleasure to meet you Whitebeard, sir, Sabo said, remaining polite. The last thing he wanted was to anger the giant. B-U-R-A-R-A-R-A -A -A -A, nice to meet you to brats. Whitebeard boomed, Sabo and Luffy both straightening at this. I understand that you wanted to speak with us. Sabo said, tone neutral and even. He gave himself a pat on the back at how calm his voice sounded when, on the inside, he was full of sheer terror saying the wrong thing. That's correct, I only had a few questions to ask, Whitebeard said, taking a sip from his cup. Sabo nodded, glancing at Luffy who was staring at the ground in front of them, doing his best not to fall into a panic attack. Luffy had tried reading the captain's emotions the second they got there, finding no darkness, no bad feelings, but he was too scared to try and look at his soul's color. He was too jittery and nervous right now that he was afraid that when he tried bringing down the wall to look at the captain's soul, he would accidentally bring down both walls and look into the captain's memories as well. The youngest brother wanted to be helpful, wanted to make sure this was a good person, but he was just too scared. Sabo could see the terror flashing in his brother's eyes, and was hit with just how different Luffy was from seven years ago. Seven years ago Luffy would have been running around this ship with reckless abandon, regardless of how many people were on the ship or how dangerous it could be, but now he was practically glued to Sabo's side, afraid to even say a peep to anyone. It was a harsh contrast, and Sabo hated that the facility had done this to him, then. I hope you understand, but there are a few things that we will not be answering until two is awake, Sabo said, tone still even and calm as he refocused his attention to the captain. Whitebeard nodded. So I've heard. I do understand, I won't force you to say anything you don't want to. He replied. Sabo nodded back, he and Luffy moving to sit on the deck. We'll start off easy. How old are you three? Whitebeard asked, and Sabo knew that, even though they pretended they weren't, the entire crew was listening. He could hear them whispering to each other, talking about them. Seven is fourteen, I'm seventeen, and two is also seventeen, he's the oldest by a few months, Sabo answered diligently, back straight and keeping his attention on the captain, not daring to break eye contact. Whitebeard frowned and Sabo, for a split second, thought he said something wrong. That's quite young. You're all brothers, correct? He asked, Sabo, nodding in affirmation. When were you taken? The blonde hesitated at the question, but found no reason not to answer. It wouldn't give them an advantage over the three, and they also wouldn't have an advantage in keeping the knowledge to themselves. Seven years ago. Seven was seven and two, and I were ten. Sabo said, voice softening and a frown forming on his face, which he quickly removed, returning neutral. Again, Whitebeard frowned, and Sabo could hear murmurs from the crew surrounding them. That long, huh? Whitebeard mumbled quietly to himself and though no one else heard it, Sabo did. Where are you three from? Surely you have a family, correct? Whitebeard asked, and Sabo grew silent, debating answering the questions. If he did and these guys turned out to be bad then they would know their hometown, and could possibly hurt their family, so maybe it wasn't such a good idea. 
Luffy pulled at Sabo's hand slightly, tapping on his side a series of words that only Sabo understood. Makino, Dayton, Garp, Bandits, Family. Sabo tapped his own side, the equivalent of nodding, and turned to Whitebeard. Sorry, but those are questions that we'll have to wait until two wakes up, Sabo says coolly, Whitebeard merely nodding his understanding. I have a feeling you won't talk about anything that happened in the facility without your brother then, hmm? Whitebeard asked, and Sabo shook his head. Luffy scooted closer to him at the mention of the facility, the brothers so close together they were practically conjoined at the hip. Sabo, even though he couldn't feel emotions like Luffy did, could practically feel the nervous energy radiating off of Luffy, and tried sending him feelings of love. Without two we wouldn't be saying a word about what happened at that place, Sabo said, his voice gaining a slight edge as he too thought of the facility, his calm demeanor slipping for a mere fraction of a second. Whitebeard, Marco, and Thatch all saw the anger boiling in the teen's eyes, the slight frown he held before his mask was back up, and he looked as if he was never bothered in the first place. Understood. Do you have any questions? I'll do my best to answer. Whitebeard said, the boys having caught his interest. He wanted to know more about them, but with how tight-lipped the blonde was without his other brother, he had a feeling he wouldn't be learning much of anything with where they were going. Sabo was silent a moment before he spoke up. Why did you help all of us? Sabo asks, and Whitebeard smiles a bit, raising an eyebrow. It wouldn't help a child asking for help. Whitebeard asks, and Sabo smiles just the slightest bit, his nerves still all over the place. Well, for one, you don't know us, and not to mention your pirates, you normally kill and pillage, not save and hell children, Sabo says, Luffy snuggling closer. Whitebeard nods. Yes, most pirates would do that, but I think you'll find that we're not exactly your average pirates, Whitebeard says with a light chuckle. Why do you care so much about the facility? Sabo asks, the question having been bothering him for a while now. As he said before, they were pirates, why would they care about this unknown facility on an island that they were only supposed to be restocking at? When I heard from my sons that there was a building on this island that was keeping children locked up in cells I was naturally curious, Whitebeard was suddenly cut off when Luffy sat stock straight, Sabo doing the same only seconds later. Whitebeard was about to question the sudden change in their demeanor when they both suddenly stood up, charging their way back towards the infirmary, crew members moving out of their way in shock. What was that about? Thatch asks in shock, Marco merely shrugging in answer. Marco, Thatch, Izo, go see what the problem is, Whitebeard says, the three commanders nodding and rushing off after the two. Luffy had been listening to Sabo talk, listening to Whitebeard ask his questions, all the while keeping a close check on Ace's wave, making sure that his brother was still okay. As he stared at the wave in front of him Whitebeard began answering Sabo's question. Luffy half listened, making sure that these people were actually good so far, whether they were lying or not, when he suddenly saw the wave getting darker, as dark as Sabo's yellow one. Sabo had also been focusing on both Whitebeard and the crew, as well as the nurses in the infirmary, when he heard something that made him sit up straighter than he had been before. He and Luffy both tapped the same words to each other at the same time before standing and running off to the infirmary, not even sparing a second thought to the pirates. Ace is awake. Chapter 18. Stress-filled family reunions. Luffy and Sabo were running as fast as they possibly could, doctor's orders be damned, hoping they could reach their brother before things got too out of control. Sabo could hear the nurses talking about how Ace's heart rate was rising, how he was gaining consciousness, and so he and Luffy had bolted from their spot on the deck, ignoring anyone and everything. Faintly, Sabo realized that they were being followed, but he didn't care, as long as they got to Ace before things got too bad. Luffy was still gripping his hand, tapping it with his fingers. Your second? Luffy asked. Sabo shook his head. Even though he wanted to get to Ace faster, he didn't want the pirates to know about Luffy's abilities. Being followed, don't give anything away. Luffy nodded at Sabo's response, the two rushing down the hallway, remembering exactly which door was the infirmary. When they reached the door they knew to be the one they practically rammed it down without any concern for the repercussions. When they were inside they were finally able to see what was happening. Ace was awake, that was for sure. He had his back to the wall, nurses standing in front of him with what Sabo was sure was needles, making his, and Luffy's, skin crawl. Their eldest brother was scowling at everyone, a snarl making its way onto his lips, his fists clenched at his side as he scanned over everyone in front of him. Behind Sabo and Luffy the other three pirates ran in, quickly taking in the scene as well. You need to calm down, no one here is going to hurt you. Whiskey tried to tell Ace, voice calm but the needle in her hand, setting the oldest off again as he flinched away from her. Oh, two's awake. Thatch said, slight surprise in his voice. Sabo ignored him, gripping Luffy's hand tighter as the two tried making their way to the front. Do you think that's such a good idea? Izo asked, reaching to pull them back, but Sabo swayed just out of his reach, having expected the grab due to his hockey. He's our brother, of course it's a good idea. Pointing needles at him and telling him to calm down, isn't going to help any more than throwing fire on fire. Sabo growled out, glaring at the pirates as he none to gently shoved his way the front. 
When they reached the front Luffy examined his brother closer, noticing there was a weird feeling coming from Ace. Whiskey noticed the two in the midst of her trying to calm their brother down and hesitated. I don't think you two should be here, he could be delusional. Whiskey said softly, not sure what the drug could have done to the man. All the more reason to be here, we know our brother better than you do after all, Sabo said, and he was right. The nurses and pirates knew nothing about Ace and his abilities. Sabo was fully aware that the drug could have done a number of things to Ace and his brain, and he was prepared for him to be less than alright, but that didn't mean he wasn't going to help his brother. Especially when they were surrounded by nurses with needles that made his skin prickle with unease. Where am I? And who are you bastards? Ace asked in a very ace-like manner, causing Sabo to sigh and look at Luffy. The youngest was staring intently at Ace, eyes narrowed and focused, a slight look of confusion on his face. What is it Seven? Sabo asked quietly, Whiskey's attention turning to them both. Luffy tilted his head, Marco, Thatch, and Izo, making their way to the front of the crowd with them, and watching Luffy as well. His colors weird it's like a weird yellowy green Luffy mumbled, calm enough to drop his wall to see Ace's ore, noticing that the normal blue was replaced with the odd color. He'd never seen someone so look that color, and he didn't know what it meant. Sabo frowned at the words as well, glancing back at Ace. His color. What do you mean? His skin. It looks pretty normal to me. Thatch said, thoroughly confused along with everyone else. Sabo chose to ignore the man, taking a step towards Ace who immediately turned his attention on him and Luffy. He's confused, he doesn't know what's happening. Luffy murmured to Sabo. Sabo had told him a while ago that when Ace woke up he might not be the same for a little while because of the drug the doctors gave him, so Luffy had time to prepare for this. But seeing his brother look at him like he was a stranger still hurt. Who are you two? Where am I? Ace asked, and Sabo suddenly had a realization. He doesn't remember anything, not even us. Sabo signed to Luffy. Their brother was amnesic. Your name is Ace, and we're on a ship, the Moby Dick, Sabo said gently. To hell with hiding things from the pirates, he was sure he'd regret it later, but right at this moment, he needed his brother to calm down, before he accidentally used fire powers he didn't know he had. How did I get here, and who are all you people? Ace asked, ready for a fight to break out any second. Sabo took a step closer, Luffy as well, and raised his free hand in a calming gesture. I'm Sabo, and this is my brother Luffy. You are brother Ace and we were taken to this ship so that we could get better. We were really sick. Sabo said gently, leaving out major details, but that didn't matter right now. All eyes were on them as Ace continued to glare at him and Luffy. Brothers. I don't have any brothers. Ace shouted, Luffy wincing slightly at the words and Sabo frowning, but clearing his face quickly. Be but you do, cause me and Sabo are your brothers, and we love you, and you love us, and Luffy trailed off, remembering the feeling of love Ace always sent him, the warmth that always calmed him down after a day of testing or training. He imagined sending that emotion to Ace, imagined that, if Ace felt that emotion, he would remember his brothers and what happened. What do you last remember? Sabo asked, trying to keep Luffy from breaking down into tears. Ace was still glaring, though it let up a bit as he thought. I, I don't know I don't remember anything except Ace frowned, glare gone completely. Except. Sabo said slowly, trying to get Ace to keep talking. Except wanting to be free, to get out Ace mumbled, Sabo frowning at the words. We're free now, though. We're out, so you don't need to worry about that anymore. Luffy said desperately, eyes shiny with tears. All the nurses could see that the threat Ace pose was diminishing, if only slightly, and they began to calm a bit, some putting their needles away. They could see the clear signs of amnesia, but continued to let the brothers talk, continued to let them calm Ace. Whiskey was watching closely, Marco, Thatch, and Izo doing the same, ready to help if Ace became violent. At least we know their names now, Izo murmured to the other two, both nodding their agreement. I'm sure I you'll want to hear about this too, Yoi, Marco said, eyes not leaving the brothers for a second. We're free. Ace asked questioningly, confused, almost like he didn't understand the concept. Luffy nodded rapidly, while Sabo nodded at a much slower rate. Yeah, we're free, we're not trapped anymore Ace, Sabo said softly, watching his brother's reaction carefully. Luffy was still doing his best to send Ace the feeling of warmth when Ace's expression suddenly turned to one of pain, gripping his head in his hands and groaning. What's happening? Sabo signed to Luffy in concern. Luffy didn't quite know himself, but did his best to explain it to Sabo. His color is changing again, it's trying to be blue again, and his wave is flashing. Sabo, I'm scared. What's happening to Ace? The desperation in Luffy's taps and eyes concerned Sabo, and he released his brother's hand, quickly rushing over to Ace's side, Luffy following. Ace, what's wrong? Sabo asked in a hushed voice. Keep seeing weird pictures Ace gritted out, teeth clenched. Sabo hoped that was a good thing. Maybe he was getting his memories back. He could see Whiskey edging closer to them, and debated whether he should let her get closer or not. He didn't trust her one bit, but what if something was happening to Ace that needed immediate attention? 
He wasn't a doctor, and as much as he wanted to keep his brother healthy and safe without anyone else's help, it was inevitable that they would need outside assistance. Before he had to make a tough decision though, Ace stopped groaning, letting go of his hair slowly and blinking, looking around with a frown. Ace? Sabo asked, hopeful, Luffy shifting beside him impatiently. Back to blue. Luffy informed, looking intently at Ace's soul, the yellow-green color gone completely, replaced with the normal blue he normally saw around Ace. Sabo? Luffy? What's going on? Ace asked, wincing when he tried to stand up straight. Ah, my head, what the hell did the bastards do to me? Ace asked, squinting his eyes slightly. Ace? Luffy cried happily, tears that he would normally keep back flooding to the surface and falling freely down his face, a bright smile on his face. He jumped into his brother's arms, the freckled man grabbing him tightly with confusion. Luffy? What's wrong? Wait, where are we? Ace asked, becoming defensive at the sight of dozens of people looking at him, some armed with needles. He glared at them. He didn't know what was happening, he definitely wasn't in the facility, and he was pretty sure these were doctors or nurses, so what was going on? Calm down, safe, for now. The tapping from Sabo caught his attention, and he tried to force himself to at least look calmer. He had no idea what was happening, but Sabo was smart, so listening to him was his best option right now, whether he liked it or not. Ace, this is the medical staff of the Whitebeard Pirates, as well as three commanders, Marco, Thatch, and Izo. Sabo introduced in an overly formal tone that made Ace raise an eyebrow. That doesn't explain how the hell we got here when we were and Ace cut himself off, not sure how much anyone in this place knew, and he sure as hell wasn't going to give them any information. They know about the facility, Sabo said with a sigh, Ace whipping his head to look at Sabo who raised his hands up defensively. Hey, don't look at me like that, I didn't tell them anything about it, and neither did Luffy. You know, he really took to heart what you said about not telling anyone anything, he didn't talk to these people until I woke up, they thought he was a mute. Sabo explained, smiling to Luffy who beamed proudly, and Ace did a double take at the pure smile that he remembered coming from Luffy. He hadn't seen him smile in months, and here he was beaming like the sun. He was still holding Luffy who had wrapped his legs around his waist, clinging to him like the monkey his name signified. Anyways, when Luffy got out he apparently ran through the forest until he found Marco and Thatch. He managed to get them to come help us and, don't make that look, he checked first, deemed them good colors. He brought them to the facility where they helped get us, and all the other kids out. Sabo continued, he's still giving everyone a skeptical look, which Sabo understood. If he hadn't been trying so hard to stay on their good side, he would have done the same thing. Then where are the other kids? Ace asked, glancing at all the empty beds with a frown. They left today. The people in the town took them to their homes. Luffy said happily, trying to ignore the feeling of everyone staring at them. We're safe. Ace sat the signal on Luffy's leg, away from anyone's view. Sabo and Luffy nodded, though Sabo signaled back as well. For now. Staying on good side, hundreds of pirates, Captain is Whitebeard. Sabo tapped out, Ace bristling as he went on. They could barely handle the dozens of guards and doctors, granted they had been weakened with sea stone and malnutrition, but Ace still didn't like their chances. Talk later. Ace signaled, wanting everyone in the room gone so he could be with his brothers, though none of them looked like they were leaving anytime soon. Sabo nodded. These pirates have been nice enough to let us stay until we're back to full health. Luffy and I have been resting for a few days now, and now that you've woken up the drug they gave you will probably be gone soon as well. Sabo stated, looking at Whiskey for confirmation. She nodded, stepping forward a bit, though Ace instinctively jerked back, setting Luffy down, so they both had better mobility. Whiskey held her hands up in the air, a small smile on her face. I'm Whiskey, the head nurse, I've been taking care of you three the past few days, and, like your brother said, the drug should be almost completely gone by now. Why don't you go lay back down, you two as well, Sabo, Luffy, remember what I said about no string? She asked, sending the brothers a frown. They shifted under the look, and Luffy felt his heart sink, the air getting harder to breathe. Were they going to be punished? Luffy really didn't want to find out, so he grabbed his brother's hands, frowning, and tried pulling them to their beds. Sabo went without protest, thinking along the same lines as Luffy, and Ace glared at Whiskey but followed along as well. Stupid doctors, always ordering us round. Ace grumbled out, quiet enough so none of the nurses heard, but as they passed Marco, Thatch, and Izo, they gave each other a look, having heard the words. The rest of the nurses dispersed, seeing as Whiskey seemed to have a handle on the situation now, while Marco, Thatch, and Izo stayed, following the brothers to their beds. The beds, as much as Luffy wanted them to be, weren't big enough to fit all three brothers in them, so Sabo went to his assigned bed, while Luffy climbed into Ace's with him, having missed his brother, and both the physical and emotional warmth he always gave Luffy. I'd like to do a quick checkup if that's okay, to make sure the drug is completely gone, and see if there are any other side effects. Whiskey stated, though the brothers had a feeling that even if they denied the checkup, she would find a way to do one anyways. 
despite to say still looked ready to argue, but eventually complied when Sabo gave him a look. When he finally knew what the hell was going on, he would get them out, Sabo's plans be damned. They were so close to freedom that Ace wasn't going to let this stop them. As Whiskey performed the checkup all three brothers watched her every move, Ace openly glaring at the nurse, while Sabo and Luffy watched with much more neutral looks. Sabo had seen the nurse holding a needle when they first walked in, and he wasn't going to put it past the doctor to pull it back out and give Ace a random drug, now that he was awake. Everything seems to be good, the only thing I see wrong with you is the muscle deterioration from your malnutrition, but with a few of Thatcher's meals, I'm sure you'll be back to full health in no time. Whiskey said, smiling to the brothers. Ace, Thatcher's food is the best. It tastes way better than the weird soup, and we get actual food. Like rice, and bananas, and bread, and Sabo makes me eat the green stuff because it's healthy, but that doesn't mean I like it that much, but sometimes he gives us pudding too. And knowing Luffy's tendency to ramble Ace snotted, knocking the straw hat off his brother's head and messing up his hair. That's great Lou, can't wait to try it. Ace said with a strange smile, not intending to eat anything he was given anytime soon, unless he or his brothers made it. Luffy grinned at him, picking up his hat and fiddling with it. It was quite a moment, Whiskey having walked off after Ace's checkup, mumbling to herself about some paperwork she had to do, leaving the brothers alone with the three pirates at the end of their beds. Or, as alone as they could be when the room was packed with nurses. Ace's attention turned to them, glaring, and Sabo sighed. He just hopes Ace didn't piss them off too much. Now that the eldest was awake he felt much better about his odds when it came to getting off his ship, but that didn't mean they were ready to take on the abundance of pirates that made up the Whitebeard crew. Well you just missed lunch, but I think I can whip something up before it gets too close to dinner. Thatch said with a thoughtful look, drawing the brothers' attention back to the pirates. Thatch began mumbling to himself about different dishes, the brothers promptly ignoring him and turning to Marco who looked ready to talk. It seems the things work themselves out then, Yoi, Marco said, arms crossed and bored expressions still present. It would seem so, Sabo replied, slightly tense. He had almost forgotten the fact that he and Luffy had run off in the middle of a conversation with Whitebeard. He only hoped the pirate captain wasn't too mad. That's good, I'll tell Oyaji your brother's finally awake. You three should get some rest. Marco said, already turning to leave. Aizo smiled to them, Thatch already out the door with lunch plans. They well soon. Aizo called, waving to them as he followed the others out, leaving the brothers by themselves. What was the issue, my son? Whitebeard asked. The commander's meeting was being held, Whitebeard wanting a full update on everything that's happened recently. Marco sat slightly straighter in his chair. It seems that the two brothers were running back to the infirmary, and when they got there the third brother was awake, Yoi, Marco informed, Whitebeard humming in thought. And how did they know their brother was awake? Whitebeard asked, more to himself. Marco sighed, a slight frown on his face. That, I don't know. When they got there it was almost like they expected him to be awake, they weren't surprised at all. Their other brother also showed the same signs of fear as the other children, not wanting to be anywhere near a nurse or needle, Yoi. Marco added, Izo and Thatch nodding their agreement. The kid didn't have any memories at first, but when he got them back he was just as guarded as the other two. He didn't want to be anywhere near Whiskey or the other nurses. Izo said, face obscured by his fan. The third one also said something weird when Whiskey told them to get back to bed. I don't think any of the nurses heard it, but we did when he walked by us. Thatch said, still wondering over the words Ace had said. Oh? What was it? Whitebeard asked, the other commanders listening as well. Everyone wanted to know more about the kids, but they had all been so tight-lipped about whatever had happened in the facility, that they weren't any closer to knowing than when they first found them. He said something about doctors always ordering them around, like it's happened a lot before. Thatch said, frowning a bit. Maybe they got hurt a lot as kids and always had to go to the doctors. Harita suggested from across the table. Marco shook his head. They've been trapped in the facility for seven years, even if that were the case, why well, remember something like that now, Yuri? Marco questioned. Now everyone was frowning in confusion. Hey, weren't some of those people in the facility wearing those long doctor's coats? Jozu asked, remembering how half the people had been wearing guard uniforms, and the others were wearing the coats. Oh yeah. I thought it was weird Thatch said, thinking back on the appearances of the people. And there was that strange room with all that equipment, Izo said behind his fan. When they had freed the children the pirates had checked the entire facility, finding the lab with all the chairs and tables, as well as tanks full of water, and even the training room. It did smell oddly like the infirmary. Thatch said, scrunching his nose up as he remembered the smell. So were the people there doctors? Vista asked, confused. Whitebeard frowned. It made the most sense why they would fear doctors, but what had happened? There were still too many questions, and trying to fill in even one of them was impossible. At the moment, our best guess is that the people there were doctors of some kind, Yoi, Marco said, Whitebeard nodding his agreement to the words. There was a knock on the door suddenly, everyone turning to face it. Pops, I've got the reports on the brothers. 
Whiskey's voice was muffled behind the door. Come in daughter. Whitebeard's voice boomed and the door opened without further hesitation, Whiskey walking in and closing it behind her, as she made her way to the captain, holding some papers in her hand which she handed to him. These were just finished not too long before this, the blood work finally came back. This was when we first got the brothers when two of them were still unconscious. The results on the right are the blondes and the left are the freckle kids. Whiskey explained, Whitebeard placing the papers on the table for everyone to see as Whiskey pointed everything out. What's it mean? Thatch asked, confused by whatever he was looking at. Whiskey rolled her eyes but explained. Well, this is the drug that caused the comas in the first place, and at this point in time, it was easily present in the bloodstream. The different compounds that were formed together were strong enough to put anyone it was given to into a coma, easily. The thing is, with how strong it was, those two should have been under for much more than a few days. Blondie didn't have much, so it makes more sense why he woke up so easily, but Freckleface here got almost a full vial's worth. Whiskey explained. Though not many understood what that meant they did know that it was significant. And? Harita asked, still lost. Whiskey huffed in frustration. And? Freckleface should have been out for months, maybe even a whole year with this drug. Yet, he's wide awake on day three. And don't even get me started on all the strange chemicals I've found in both of their bodies. I don't have any of the youngest blood, but I'm sure if I did it would be just as bad as his brothers. Whiskey said, picking the papers back up and looking at them as if she didn't quite believe them still. How is it possible for him to wake up after three days if the drug was that strong? Namor asked. Whiskey gave another huff, a look of frustration passing over her face, before she forced herself to calm down. That would seem to be the million beery question. Chapter 19. Unlikely questions, unlikely answers. The brothers were as alone as they could be in the infirmary, most of the nurses gone, though there were still a few mingling towards the front of the room. Ace, Sabo, and Luffy had been talking in hushed voices so no one could eavesdrop on them, and they didn't have to read a bunch of signals. Sabo had been explaining to Ace everything that had happened while he was out, Luffy filling in bits he still wasn't too sure on, like how he and the pirates got them out of the facility. It was the day after Ace had woken up. That had given him lunch as promised, Ace digging into the soup that tasted better than anything he'd ever eaten before, after some prodding from Sabo and Luffy. By dinner he was much calmer than he had been earlier due to Sabo practically yelling at him to be as nice as possible. Breakfast had passed much the same as previous meals had, and when all the nurses left the brothers found it the perfect opportunity to talk to each other. So they just let the kids go. Ace asked in a tone that screamed disbelief. Sabo nodded, Luffy listening, but playing with the blanket on Ace's bed, instead of contributing to the conversation. From what we know, yes, they were taken to the town on the island, and the townspeople there brought them home. According to them, you need about a week or two to heal, and they can't stay docked at an island too long, so they had to leave the island yesterday before you woke up. Sabo said, remembering that when they went to talk to Whitebeard they hadn't been docked at the island anymore. Ace scowled. You mean we're stuck again? Ace said, Sabo nodding. Basically, yes, but this time we have the upper hand. They obviously aren't too worried about us, we aren't cuffed, and they know nothing about our abilities. Their estimate for your recovery is already way off, you look back to normal already, and they don't know about you or Luffy having devil fruits. Sabo explained, and Ace nodded, hopes rising. There's a lot of pirates on this ship, but if we use the element of surprise to our advantage, we should be able to at least get to a smaller boat somewhere on this ship, and try and navigate to another island, but we're in the Grand Line, and even if we had a compass it wouldn't work here. Sabo explained, fiddling with his blanket. So? I'd rather be in the middle of the ocean than with bastards who are a word away from turning on us. Ace said, still scowling. Sabo sighed, shaking his head. You say that now, but what about when we're out of food and there isn't a single island in sight? Right now, these pirates are feeding us and keeping us healthy. All we have to do is play nice until we reach the next island. Sabo hoped Ace would see the reasoning behind his words, rather than try to get through this with brute force. Sometimes it worked and most times it failed, leaving them in a worse position than when they started. We don't know these bastards. What if they spend months without going to another island? Or they lock us up like they did in the facility? Ace asked. Luffy, feeling the anger and slight fear coming from Ace, snuggled closer, trying to calm the temperamental brother. They're big craze, they have to stop somewhere sometime, and if they do turn on us suddenly then that's why it's good to have the element of surprise. The second they try locking us up we fight our way to a boat and leave, but there's no use in leaving now when we're safer here than on a sea we know nothing about. Sabo reasoned, Ace falling silent while Luffy looked between the two. Fine. Ace said after a minute. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna like it. Ace said defiantly, crossing his arms and pouting. Sabo sighed in relief. You don't have to like it, just try not to be too mean to them, I'd rather we get as close to an island as possible before you start pissing people off, Sabo said, hearing someone coming towards the infirmary and signaling to his brothers who fell silent. Within seconds Marco was walking in, heading straight for their bed. 
Before Ace had a chance to say anything, Sabu spoke up. Hello, First Commander. It's nice to see you, Sabu said, smiling with practiced ease. With the plant set and his brothers all safe and healthy, Sabu found it much easier to stay calm and put on a mask. Marco nodded towards him. Nice to see you too, Yuri. Whiskey told me all of you are good to walk around if you wanted. Same rules apply, she doesn't want a repeat of yesterday. Marco says, glancing to Luffy and Sabo, both doing their best not to fidget under the gaze, while Lace did his best not to start shouting at him. We understand. Was there something you wanted? Sabo asked before the hothead could argue. He was slightly confused, he and Luffy having spent days in bed before getting an okay to leave, but Ace had been up for only a day, and he was fine. He knew that the eldest was fine, but the doctor didn't know about Ace's healing ability, so why was he getting the okay so much sooner? Sabo ignored these thoughts, deciding to think on them more later, when Marco spoke up again. Why Aji wanted to speak with all of you seeing as we were interrupted yesterday, Marco said, clearly expecting them to go that second. Sabo bit the inside of his cheek, smiling. Maybe this was why he was allowed to move so early, so they could go see the captain. Of course. We should get going then. Sabo said, hiding his growing discomfort as he turned to look at his brothers. Ace was scowling while Luffy was frowning, grabbing Ace's hand as they all stood up, following Marco out the door. The walk was as nerve-wracking as it had been yesterday, Luffy clinging tightly to Ace and Sabo's hands, sandwiched tightly in between his two brothers, who were focusing all their energy on keeping their guards up. As they exited the hall they were once again blinded by the light, Ace looking up at the sky in wonder, not having experienced the natural light in years, unlike Sabo and Luffy who had experienced it yesterday. He was quickly pulled from his stupor though when Luffy tugged his hand, refocusing him on the many eyes that were on them. Marco was talking to the crowd, telling them to get to work, but it had the same effect as yesterday, Pyrus only pretending to look away when, in reality, they were watching the three out of the corner of their eyes in curiosity. Sabo couldn't blame the crew for their curiosity, but that didn't make it any easier for them to make their way across the deck, Ace bristling in discomfort, ready to snap at anyone who so much as looked at them wrong. Luffy was shuffling quietly in between the oldest two, eyes focused on the ground as he tried taking in some of the emotions around them, looking for any signs of the darkness that lingered in bad people. He wasn't getting much, mostly just curiosity, but that was good, right? It meant that at least the majority didn't have the bad feelings and probably wouldn't hurt them. Soon enough they were reaching Whitebeard's massive chair, his commanders all dutifully at his side, Marco joining them like he had yesterday. Hello again Whitebeard, sir, Sabo said smoothly, politely, doing his best to keep his tone steady. Ace was biting his cheek to keep from saying anything, allowing Sabo to take charge and do the talking. Good morning. I'm glad to see that you three are all up and healthy. Whitebeard said, the brothers detecting nothing but earnestness in his voice. Luffy sensed the pure emotions coming from the giant, and became ever slightly more comfortable. It was strange, the feelings that the giant man emitted made Luffy feel safe, calm, but he didn't quite know why. It wasn't enough to really calm him down, his stress and anxiety levels extremely high from all the attention on him and his brothers, but he felt just calm enough to bring down a barrier and look at Whitebeard's soul, squeezing Ace and Sabo's hands for reassurance. The two older brothers glanced at Luffy when he squeezed their hands, noticing the look in his eyes as he gazed at the giant, and they turned their attention back to the captain, tense, ready for Luffy to tell them whether there was darkness in the man or not. It's thanks to your medical staff that we were able to recover this fast in the first place, Sabo said, trying to continue the conversation and keep the attention on him, rather than on Luffy. His voice was slightly more strained than it had been previously, and he wasn't sure if anyone else picked up on it, but he had other things to worry about. Seeing as we were cut off yesterday, I'm sure you've got more questions, correct? Sabo asked after a pause in the conversation. Whitebeard nodded, humming in response. Yes, if you wouldn't mind answering some more questions I would be grateful. He says calmly, Ace and Sabo turning their attention to Luffy briefly who seemed to be finished looking. No darkness. Luffy tapped the words on their hands, calming the brothers ever so slightly, though Ace still looked ready to bite someone's head off, and Sabo was barely holding himself together as it was. Luffy was going back to fidgeting, turning his attention to the commanders to try and determine their souls as well to see if they had any darkness. We'll answer what we're comfortable with, Sabo said, moving to sit on the deck, his brothers doing the same. Whitebeard nodded in understanding, everyone settling in for a long conversation. Why don't we start off simple? I've heard that you three have names, yet it seems everyone knows them but me. Whitebeard said with a smile, looking at the commanders who had been in the infirmary when they had given their names, that rubbing the back of his head sheepishly and smiling. They had been so busy after the awakening of Ace, and it slipped their minds to tell Whitebeard about them. Luffy, who had finished looking at Marco and Thatch's souls, was moving on to Izos, discreetly telling his brothers that he hadn't found any darkness yet. Ace was, for once, remaining silent, assessing the entire situation with a watchful eye, ready to bolt the second he didn't like something. That's correct, my name is Sabo. 
Luffy here's the youngest, and Ace there's the oldest. Sabo said, gesturing to himself and his brothers. Luffy briefly removed his attention from Izo to look at Whitebeard, and give him the best smile he could, which wasn't much, just a slight raise of the corners of his mouth, before turning his attention back to Izo, making sure the lady not lady wasn't looking at him. They snotted to Whitebeard, frown still present on his face. Sabo said he had to try and be nice, but that was easier said than done, especially when Ace felt like his skin was crawling, and all his instincts told him to run, to get himself and his brothers out of the situation they were in. Two of them were Levin, that's Ace and Sabo, the oldest brothers. Luffy's only eight, that's Garp's grandson. At the sound of the brothers' names, a knowing glint shone in Whitebeard's eyes, but he held the question in, for now, wanting to know more about the brothers before he brought it up. He smiled slightly instead, nodding his head. I think it'd be best to just ask the question on everyone's mind, that being, what was the purpose of the facility? Whitebeard asked, only a tone of curiosity in his voice, no malice detected in his speech or posture. To be sure though Ace tapped Luffy's leg, getting the youngest's attention away from the commanders and back on Whitebeard. A quick scan and a few taps later told the eldest brothers that Luffy hadn't felt any darkness either, which only slightly eased the brothers as Luffy turned back to the commanders, now on to the last five of the fifteen commanders. They had yet to answer the captain, Ace, and Sabo having a quick conversation between themselves, debating whether or not they should tell them anything. We should at least answer something, we can't put off answers forever if we want to stay on their good sides. Sabo tapped quickly, moving his eyes to the deck in front of him, watching Ace's fingers out of the corner of his vision. But why do they need to know in the first place, it's not their business. Ace tapped back, just as fast, if not faster, also staring at the deck in front of him. Ace, regardless of whether it is or not, not answering them could make them angry, we aren't prepared for everyone on this deck to attack us at the moment. You only just woke up, you need at least another day of rest till you're ready to fight at your full strength. Sabu tapped, a slight frown working its way to his features. The cares, I can still fight and that's all that matters. Ace tapped defiantly, almost huffing in frustration. Sabu's lips thinned. Ace, that's not the point. We can be vague, don't get too detailed, just answer enough to make them satisfied. Sabu tapped, trying to compromise with the stubborn fire user. They stint tapped for a few seconds, and they were going on a full minute without responding to Whitebeard, the commanders watching them with piercing gazes, ready for an answer they had yet to give. Fine. They tapped, glaring slightly as Sabu rose his gaze back up to Whitebeard, Ace still refusing to look at the captain. Sabu removed the frown from his face and went back to a neutral look, inhaling as he felt Luffy tap that another commander was clear, no darkness. The facility's purpose is beyond me and my brothers. What they wanted was never clear, and they never told us much in the first place. Sabo said coolly, fighting the urge to fidget restlessly at all the eyes on them, all the attention. If they didn't finish this conversation soon he wasn't sure if he would be able to keep Ace at bay anymore. The eldest was gripping his shorts with one fist, his other hand holding Luffy's hand tightly in a vice grip that would probably crush the poor boy's bones if they weren't made of rubber. To be fair, Sabo wasn't doing much better either. Though his outward appearance may seem calm and relaxed, he was anything but... He was clutching Luffy's hand as well, maybe just as tight as Ace's, while his other rested on his knee, his face a mask of neutrality, but on the inside his nerves were jumping and begging him to run from the situation he was forcing himself into. Luffy was too concentrated on checking the souls of the commanders to give in to his nerves, but he was gripping their hands tightly as well, his face neutral, eyes piercing, literally, into the commander's souls, making sure no one was watching him as he did. When someone did happen to glance his way he quickly averted his eyes, looking at the ground, and trying to calm his increasingly rapid breathing. Do you have any idea as to what they were trying to do? Why they needed so many children? Whitebeard asked, pulling Sabo from his musings. Luffy was finishing up checking the commanders now, relaying the message that they were all clear, no darkness in them, which calmed them all just a tiny bit more. No? All we know is that, whenever one child left, they were replaced with another. Sabo said, an edge in his voice at the thought, the brother's expressions darkening. Left. Like, went home. Thatch asked innocently from where he stood. Ace didn't even bother trying to hold back the scoff at the question, Luffy looking back at the ground and Sabo shaking his head, frowning. No, no one went home. The only way you left the facility was when you were no longer useful. Sabo replied darkly. No longer useful. Thatch murmured, still not quite getting it. Dead. You left when you were dead. Ace growled out, Luffy beginning to tremble slightly, moving to snuggle closer into Ace's side for comfort. Thoughts momentarily forgotten, Ace turned his attention to Luffy, letting go of his hand and wrapping his arm around his shoulders, hugging him closer. Sabu scooted closer to Luffy as well, knowing the boy liked physical contact best when he was scared or nervous. Thatch, finally understanding what Sabu had meant, frowned, everyone else doing the same. What would the people in the facility do to the children? Whitebeard asked, wearing a frown of his own, though not directed at the brothers. 
the brothers couldn't keep the memories from flashing back of all the tests, trials, training, doctors, needles, tools, straps. Sabu shook himself out of those thoughts, turning and seeing Ace and Luffy's eyes glazed over, remembering the same things Sabu had. Luffy's trembling was getting worse, more visible to anyone, which was everyone, watching them, and even Ace was beginning to tremble ever so slightly, though you wouldn't notice unless you were right beside him like Sabu was. Letting go of Luffy's hand Sabu tapped Ace's arm, trying to draw the eldest out of his thoughts. When he did Ace looked around, a slightly crazed look in his eyes before noticing Sabu. Help Lou. Sabu tapped, turning back to the captain and clearing his throat, knowing Ace would manage to calm Luffy down better than he could at the moment. The people, if they can even be called that, did anything they wanted to us. If they thought of something, they did it, no matter the side effects. Sabu said, voice low though audible to those listening, tone dark and eyes swimming with anger. They use a lot of needles Luffy's voice was quite soft and timid. Everyone looked at him in surprise, not having expected the boy to talk, and Luffy himself didn't look like he had expected himself to either. And they made us eat yucky soup, and we never got any good food, and they always made us sit in hard chairs, and they made us sick, and gave us headaches, and hurt us, and... Luffy? Ace's tone was hard, yet not mean. It was only meant to pull Luffy from his ramblings, and it worked, the boy blinking in surprise, looking around, before meeting Ace's eyes and frowning, leaning even more into his brother. Sorry. He mumbled to Ace, closing his eyes and trying to forget the fact that people were watching him, that they were asking about the facility, that they were surrounding him and his brothers, that if they said something wrong, they would be attacked. It was silent as Luffy's words sunk in, the brothers not daring to speak in fear that the pirates would attack. Instead, they waited for someone, anyone, to speak up again, hoping that they would finish this conversation soon. Eventually, it was Whitebeard who spoke up. I'm sorry that you three, as well as all the other children, had to go through something as horrible as that. He said gently, still frowning, though much gentler than it had been. Sabo nodded. I only have one more question, for now, one much lighter than the previous. He said, Sabo and Ace watching him carefully, Luffy still buried against Ace's chest. What is it? Sabo asked, ready to be done with this. He felt exhausted from this talk, the memories weighing heavy in his mind. You three happen to know a brat named Dreadhaired Shanks. 